Big 12 teams start their seasons focused on the conference title. Kansas State and Iowa State will battle to rule the league's northern territory. Heisman hopeful Seneca Wallace has the Cyclones competing for the crown. Scrambling, tight strokes down inside the 10, look out! Looking for a block, gets it! It's just as hard to get a hand on Kansas State's El Roberson. He's run the Wildcats into contention, evoking memories of K-State legend Michael Bishop. <laughs> Two field generals lead their teams to a Big 12 North showdown next on TBS. For the last 12 years, homecoming has been synonymous with Kansas State's success. And tonight in Manhattan, the Wildcats want to make 13 a lucky number. And we welcome you to Big Play Saturday, presented by Best Buy and T-Mobile. This series has been played every year since 1917, but no game between number 21 Iowa State and number 12 Kansas State has ever been bigger. And tonight, in perfect conditions, they meet in Manhattan, Kansas. And when you take a look at the North standings, it is obvious why this game is so big. Colorado, that overtime win over Missouri today, holding on to that one-game lead over Iowa State and Kansas State. Now, let's take a look and see what these three teams have left remaining on their schedule. Colorado still must play Iowa State and Nebraska. Iowa State, only one Big 12 game remaining. Kansas State, tough road, Nebraska and Missouri. They still have to play both. Hello again, everybody. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Ron Thulin. And Charles, you look at the numbers, it's very obvious. Kansas State needs a lot of help. But for Iowa State, their fate's in their own hand until it gets tonight. Yeah, and this is a team that's played Texas and Oklahoma on the road. So they're very excited now to be able to have the fate in their own hands, even if they still have to do it on the road tonight at Kansas State. And then next week, if they're fortunate enough to survive tonight at Colorado. No tougher road for Dan McCartney and his team. Very happy to have this opportunity. Well, they're also very happy to have Seneca Wallace, their quarterback. Now, back to the Oklahoma game a couple of weeks ago, a lot of people said his Heisman hopeful chances were out the window. Then he comes up, puts pretty good games back-to-back, -back, especially last week against Missouri. He is a very good quarterback. He did bounce back well against Texas, had his team in the ball game. But last week against Missouri, a school record 493 total yards, 425 of those in the air. But it was his legs, especially on the last drive when he ran for 59 yards, that spurred the team to a late touchdown and victory victory over the Missouri Tigers. Seneca Wallace tonight is passing we all know about, but now he needs to use his legs not just to get out of trouble, but to get upfield and gash Kansas State's defense seven to ten yards a pop. That will help the Cyclones offense. Oh, but let's not forget the quarterback for Kansas State, L. Roberson. Now, the last time you and I were here for the game against USC, L. came in in the game. He's, he uh, won that game. He has been the starter ever since, and what he has shown the last couple of weeks is a lot more consistency than he had the last couple of years. And consistency is the key for him because in the past they've wondered about him being up and down he'd have one great game 178 yards rushing against texas and then he doesn't throw the ball very well against baylor last week he put it all together against kansas they're counting on that happening again tonight and the big deal for him they know about his legs he can run the football no problem but now he must hit the passes downfield because they don't throw little dump off passes at kansas state they want to go downfield to the wide receivers l roberson must hit those guys early and often i'll tell you what charles you can't ask for a better scenario. The weather is perfect. There is a great deal riding on this game, and we are set. Kansas State has won the last eight. Iowa State wants to break that. We'll have kickoff straight ahead. Iowa State, Kansas State, from Manhattan, Kansas. TBS Big Play Saturday, brought to you by Best Buy. For the latest technology, turn on the fun at Best Buy. By the United States Army, an army of one. By the new Fajita Trio, only at Chili's, like no place else. And by NCAA Football 2003 from EA Sports. It's in the game. EJ at the big game house. Holy BCS, Batman. Look what happened to number one Oklahoma today. Playing Texas A&M. Sooners on top 23-20. Until Reggie McNeil hits Terrence Murphy from 40 yards out. AM on top. They had the lead at 30 to 26. About a minute 20 to go when Nate Hibble's pass is picked off by Terrence Keel. And the top-ranked Sooners fall 30 to 26. 
Number two, Miami, also unbeaten, looking to stay that way. Have beaten Tennessee now 26-3, so the Hurricanes are still unbeaten. Meantime, Ohio State was also unbeaten going into today's play. They trailed Purdue 6-3. 140 to go in the game when Craig Krenzel on a fourth and one hit Michael Jenkins. Ohio State has the lead, and then Kyle Orton of Purdue. A last-ditch attempt for the Boilermakers just rears back and heaves this thing, and it's picked off by Chris Gamble. Ohio State survives. They're 11-0. Ten to six winners over Purdue. So half the unbeaten teams in the country lost last week. Half the unbeaten teams in the country lost this week. Yeah, Bowling Green went down too. Iowa State, Kansas State, next on TBS. <laughs>
Watch what happens in the middle here. As the receiver runs upfield, he gets a receiver, he gets a defender underneath and a defender over the top. As we see the defensive backs number 33, James Dunnigan in, and their multiple defensive back set, able to sandwich the Iowa State receiver. No place for the football to land. Troy Blankenship, the redshirt freshman out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa, set to kick it away. Terrence Newman back on his 42-yard line. Spiraling kick. Newman backs up to the 33. Looking for a seam, crosses midfield. And Kansas State with excellent field position the first time they touch the football. Now this Kansas State offense, number three in the NCAA, and scoring just about 45 points a game, and it all starts with their quarterback. Hi, my name is L. Roberson. My major is secondary education. And what we're going to try to do today against Iowa State is a little bit of mixture of everything, run the ball and also pass the ball, uh, mix in a little option with it and just throw the ball up and let our receivers run underneath it and just play Wildcat football and keep the ball in between the white lines. Now really, Wildcat football, their M.O. is running the football. That's what they do so well. Roberson going to keep it. Inside the 45, inside the 40, down to the 38-yard line. Matt Ward coming up to make the stop from that middle linebacker spot. Let's take a look at the rest of that Kansas State offense. The running back, Darren Sproles, a.k.a. Tank. He's only 5'7". This young man can run the football quite well. Wide receivers, Taco Wallace, he's becoming the main target. And the centers and the guards, Nick Leckie at left guard. He is an NFL-type lineman. He'll play on Sundays. In the tackles, we'll see a couple of guys, but Thomas Barnett has become the crown jewel at that position. Second down and one for the Wildcats. Sproles left side, gets the first down as he makes his way down to the 35-yard line. Word and Jeremy Lloyd on the stop. And this Iowa State defense, number three in the Big 12 in turnover margin. The pressure is on this line. Jordan Carson's, however, very solid defensive tackle. He's out of Bagley, Iowa, in the middle. Matt Ward at linebacker, the senior from Miami, and the defensive backs. Jermaine Billups, he's a former running back, has become the leader, but he is going to be needed for run support today. First and ten, ball on the 36-yard line for Kansas State. Rose and Wilson in the eye formation. Checking off going out early by L. Roberson. Going to run the option. Keeps it. Inside the 30 down to the 27-yard line. Ellis Hobbs the third. The sophomore out of DeSoto, Texas. Coming up to make the stop. Well, fans, this telecast is available with Spanish translation via the SAP button on your remote control. I think what we just saw there was a great example of what L. Roberson can do with his legs, and he's not afraid to pull the ball down and take off. Also saw what he's doing with his mind now. You can see the maturation of him checking off and putting them in a better play. You pick up seven on first down, gives you a lot of opportunity to do other things, like run the option. Gets the seam to Pater. Roberson, touchdown. Touchdown of the year. It covers 28 yards. They made it look way too easy. Remember the game Bill Yeoman used to run oh, the yeah. Houston Cougars program, the old Veer offense? That was an example of an old Veer play. The fake to the fullback and a Veer read. Read whether the fullback should take it or take it outside. No one had the quarterback. El Roberson had plenty of room to run, obviously. And Joe Ream for the extra point. Cap is down and the kick is good. Roberson found that seam, Charles, and he made it look easy. Yeah, once he made the fake to the fullback, he found the gap. The defensive back has to account for him. He doesn't, and Kansas State's up seven early. Seven-nothing Kansas State, the number 12 team in the country, leading the number 21 team in the country. And Dan McCartney told us last night he was very concerned if Kansas State started out quickly, and that's exactly what happened. What he was most concerned about was how what his lines would hold up. The defensive line didn't hold up very well in that series. Bill Snyder and Ron Hudson called some excellent plays and got K-State off to a very, very fast start. 
right again gets every bit of his leg into it. Lance Young five yards deep, and again he'll take a knee. Well, in this in our game tonight, the third member of our broadcast team standing by on the field is Aaron Andrews. Aaron. All right, Ron, thanks so much. Well, one of the keys to ISU's game plan is to not get this Kansas State crowd involved. In fact, offensive coordinator Coach Bricky told me we don't want to wait to get things going. When this place is rolling, it's hard to get it stopped. And you know what? He's right about that because it's homecoming this week at Kansas State. And not only is that a huge tradition on campus, but it's also a huge tradition on the football field. How huge? Kansas State has won 12 straight homecoming games. Aaron, and they want to make 13 the lucky number. Iowa State needs to get something going, and Seneca Wallace is going to be dropped uh, as he handed off, but the ball is down. And Kansas State has it. Great penetration, though, by that Kansas State defensive line. They came right through. Josh Buell came through. He's the one who came up with the football. Take a look at our All-State replay from the end zone. Watch coming here. Here's where the crash occurs from the defensive end crashing inside. Ball was never handed off completely well. Number 97, Melvin Williams, takes Seneca Wallace out of the play. Watch. The handoff inside to Wagner. It was a fake, and the ball was just knocked out by Michael Wagner's hip. And then there on the ground, Iowa State's not aware that the ball's down, and we have a recovery, unfortunately, for Iowa State. This start is reminiscent of their game with Oklahoma. You can see that they're usually pretty good as far as turnovers. We want to thank Allstate for providing for our goal post game. They try the left side, and again, going right through that left side is Darren Sproles, a little sophomore running back out of Olathe, Kansas. Five consecutive 100-yard games running the football. If he can get six tonight, he'd tie the K-State record held by Isaac Jackson 19 years ago. I should say 29 years ago. And here's where the biggest problem comes in for Iowa State, Ron, is that all year long they have not stopped anyone in the red zone. Everyone who's been in the red zone has scored either a touchdown or a field goal. 24 for 24, 20 touchdowns have been scored heading into tonight's game. They're just not that physical when they get inside the 20. On second down, Roberson with a pitch back to Sproles looking for the end zone. No. Foot short. Jermaine Billups and Ellis Hobbs the third coming up to make the stop. But what you understand here, you mentioned it before. His nickname is Tank, number 43, Darren Sproles. You would think a little guy like that at five feet seven inches tall would be just a jitterbug. But he does not mind lowering his shoulder, dropping his head, and trying to get forward. So we take a look at John Scladini, the defensive coordinator of Iowa State, hoping his team can get a stop here. A couple of tight ends now for Kansas State. Roberson takes it in, waiting for the single penalty flag is thrown. It is a touchdown, but we have a penalty flag on the ground. Had a lot of jumping around on the line of scrimmage. Seemed to me that Iowa State was not really set on what they wanted, what personnel they wanted in the game. There were talent players. Twelve, I think you mentioned 12 people yeah. on the field. They didn't have the right personnel grouping in. Someone didn't get off the field. Someone stayed in. And you notice it how, how hard it was for them to get set anyway. It didn't matter. They could have had 15 on that play. But if you're not set in a position, <laughs> right. it doesn't matter. Well, well, Roberson has done his job. His second touchdown tonight already. And Dan McCartney's calling for the trainers right now. They need a tourniquet to stop this bleeding. Green's extra point is no good. That has been an Achilles heel for this Kansas State team. And just when they thought that they had it all figured out, they get another extra point block. But nonetheless, Kansas State's up 13 early in Manhattan.
that's going to give some young man some very nice dreams the rest of today. <laughs> that, we have one brave colleague, I'm don't we? You. The line draft kickoff, it is Wagner at the two. And Kansas State swarms him, and another penalty flag comes flying in. Hey, Kansas State coming in with a great deal of emotion. They're fired up. They know what's at stake in this ball game. Dan McCartney knows what's at stake, but right now, Kansas State with the upper hand. And I think that Kansas State is a team that is very tired of hearing about a soft schedule mm -hmm. and the fact that they haven't won a quote-unquote bigger game this year. They beat USC early in holding against Iowa State as is wont to happen in kick situations yeah. by the receiving team. But, you know, this is a team, they beat USC early. That was a big win for them. But in conference, they have not been able to get that win. The one Only that is significant. One return. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Well, you take a look at Kansas State, and here's why they have been so good in recent years. Defense. Yeah, th th this team always plays excellent defense. One, the only team in the country to rank in the top five in total defense the last five seasons. It's quite an impressive run. Gone through two coordinators, too, Phil Bennett and now Bob Elliott. It's a huge series for Iowa State. Well, they've, got, they've got to do something just to get their confidence back. They have four wide receivers set. Might have had someone jump. I don't know if an Iowa State offensive lineman pulled up or if a Kansas State defensive lineman jumped the gun. Well, last week, the EA Sports pre-play predicted Kansas State would win in a very close game. And in our fan poll, 48% of fans voted for Kansas State to win big over Five Iowa State. A false start on the offense. Half the distance to the goal. And so far this year, EA Sports has a record of 2-5. and five. The fans also a record of 2-5. and five. Stay tuned to see who's correct. Somebody's got to pull away in this. Come on. Yeah, you know, we got to find out what happens. But right now, you're looking at an Iowa State team that is very unsettled. You see John Scodani was talking with his guys on the bench trying to get the defense so The offense has to make a few plays. And they're trying to just bang out of that hole. Michael Wagner, not much running room. Well, the average start for Iowa State so far tonight, their own 15-yard line. Kansas State, their average start, the Iowa State 29. And we played less than five minutes in this game. Got a player down for Iowa State. And the tough part for the Cyclones also is as they start their series, they often have penalties that set them back even farther. There's no way to get the game started. Well, Dan McCartney's done such a great job of this Iowa State team. They're going to a bowl, third consecutive year they're going to the bowl. He's the second winning as coach in Iowa State history. He said this season has been absolutely relentless. We know they're going to play 13 games, and if they make it to the Big 12 championship game, they they could possibly play 15 games. And they've been they've been at it 15 weeks already. Reported in July to get things started, and they've done a great job of practicing because they don't have much depth. And what a great shot of Coach McCarney out there checking on his injured player, something I always like to see and I always appreciate as a former player. The head coach isn't just over there, you know, working on strategy and let someone mm -hmm. else get the, get the young man, you know. Well, it looks like Zach Butler, the big bell cow of that offensive line, the center. Matt Bacchus, the six-foot sophomore out of Grundy Center, Iowa, is already warming up. But, boy, if they lose Zach Butler, he is their inspirational leader. His dad actually played football with Dan McCartney. He's on the Remington watch list. A huge blow to this offensive line. And remember, the center... You know, on, on most teams, makes the line calls. Mm -hmm. Calls the blocking assignments, changes things up before the ball is snapped. So you lose that bit of coordination as well as as well as losing the quarterback center exchange. There's Bacchus right in the middle, number 68. Right on the back of his legs. Yeah. Notice that? Teammates rolling up on him. Very unfortunate as they try to move the line. That often happens when the defensive line is pushing you back. You see where everyone's being met? Line of scrimmage is up here. Mm -hmm. They're beating them back here. You've got to move the line of scrimmage the other way in order to have success, obviously, for Iowa State. Well, now they've got their backs against the wall. Second down and 13. Two tight ends with Knopf and Segan. Wallace looking for something. Throwing complete. First down, Iowa State to Danielson. And he is knocked out of bounds at about the 28-yard line. Okay, you get the first down, but from a confidence standpoint, you had to have that if you're Iowa State. Had to have it, and one of the things I liked is that Steve Brickey went to the guys that make plays for him. 
Obviously, the ball's in the hands of Seneca Wallace. He's the quarterback and the, and the trigger guy. 24-yard gain on this pass, but who did he go to? His number one go-to receiver, Lane Danielson. A play that needed to be made, you put it in the hands of your two best players on offense. Well, they script their first dozen plays, and I wonder if Steve Ricky's already torn up that script. <laughs> Not sure he was on script for that one. He said, I have to have this play. <laughs> well, Michael Wagner being taken down by Terry Pierce and Josh Buell, a couple of the linebackers. And Zach Butler, they're working on that right leg. He is such an excellent football player, the senior out of Iowa City. He's already heavily bandaged. You see the brace there that's on the knee, and you saw the brace they pulled off of his ankle. Sort of explaining how he got it pushed from the backside of Hope. Here's hoping they find stability in his leg and he's able to return. On second and seven, Wallace. Quick look in pass, incomplete. Intended for Jamal Montgomery. The junior out of Long Beach, California, is having his best year ever. You know, Wallace, everybody talks about his running ability, and we saw that, that tremendous run against USC a couple of weeks ago when we were here. But you talk to Seneca, as we've done a couple of times over the years, he says, listen, I'm a pocket passer. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's been something that's, done, that's worked very well for he and Iowa State this year. But last week against Missouri, we saw the old Seneca Wallace, too, where he got upfield and used his legs for positive yardage. He has to do more of that tonight also to make Kansas State pay for bringing a lot of pressure at him. Third down, Iowa State. And here they Third come. best in the conference. Kansas State with a blitz. Seneca Wallace throwing the prayer up, and it will not be answered. Jamal Montgomery, the intended receiver. Good coverage by Randy Jordan, the junior out of Tulare, California. Excellent coverage. Can't ask for better from a defensive back. Fade route to the sidelines. Randy Jordan running inside on the receiver. Here's Jordan, 24. Watch him run inside, and watch him looking back for the football. He knows where the receiver is, has him pressed into the sideline. No way that pass is going to be completed. Now the first punt return is 21 yards by Terrence Newman. You might want to think about not kicking the ball to him here. High spirally kick, and again, Newman's backing up. Penalty flag is thrown. He takes it at the 18. Cuts up the middle. He's got some room. Look out. He'll turn on the Jets. To the 50. Still on his feet. Still going. Finally pulled down at the 34-yard line. But we do have some hankies laying down at about the 44-yard line. And they came out early. I mean, that, as soon as the ball was punted, I saw the official reach and throw the penalty flag, which will probably negate mm. this great return by Newman. 50-yard kick, 47 on the return. I've got to say this. I wouldn't even think about kicking the ball to him. Yeah. That ball would be in the stands up there where Aaron was body surfing with the students. You know? That's exactly <laughs> why, right. Why put it in the hands of this guy and let him make plays? What a great block, although this ball will probably come back. But, you know, why give him an opportunity? You look at the numbers on Terrence Newman, what he has done. He has the punt return for a TD, the kick return, a receiving touchdown. He had the defensive extra point, which we saw here on TBS. This is a guy, you don't mess with his speed. He's the Big 12 60-meter indoor champ. He runs a 6-6 six -six in that event. And he's not just a speed guy. He's a football player who has speed, knows Good how to point. control it and use it. During the kick, there was holding by the receiving team. Half the distance from the end of the kick, first down. Yeah, well, Cooper Castleberry, not the most favorite person in the stadium right now. No, but based on why, uh, based on how the flag came out early, see, this is why you don't let this guy touch the football. Blocked extra point, he scoops it, and watch the cuts that he makes. We saw Seneca Wallace make the run against Texas Tech, yeah. where he went all the way across field a couple of times. Same thing here with Terrence Newman. Keep the ball out of his hands if at all possible. I think if you're Dan McCartney right now, Charles, you probably challenge that defensive line of yours so, because so far tonight they haven't done a whole lot. Rovers and busted play. And the D-line is there, and he may lose the yard. You know, actually, I don't think it was a bust. I think it was designed for him to follow the fullback after faking it in one direction, to follow the fullback back the opposite way, and there was no hole there. And then he tried to come back away from that play again, made it look like a bust, but I think he was supposed to follow Travis Wilson back to the other side. That's their quarterback run package that has about four or five plays, or what they call counters to it. You show one, you counter with another. You show another, you counter with that. 
many different options in the Kansas State run game, both with the quarterback and the tailback. And that's what Iowa State was concerned about, all the different options they do have on the counters. Now they said he gained a yard. Roberson will keep it again. Gets up to about the 12-yard line, maybe the 13. Fans, we want to remind you, you can vote for tonight's U.S. Army Players of the Game provided by America Online. Simply log on to tbssuperstation.com or AOL keyword Big Play and cast your vote. Right now, El Roberson is probably going to get a few votes. Two touchdowns already tonight. John Scaldani's defense improved every year since he has taken over. This is the best year ever for the defense, but right now they're being challenged. They need to stop here because they have field position on their side for the first time in the game. Third down and seven. Kansas State best in the conference, third down conversions. Roberson dancing around, takes a big hit as he crosses the 15. Brandon Brown, the weak side linebacker out of Houston, Texas, just a sophomore, lowered the boom on him. And Kansas State will be forced to kick it away the first time today. What a great job by the Iowa State defense. They caught a break with the penalty, but they took advantage of it. Covered the receivers downfield, had the linebackers stay at home. No one flushed out of their pocket or their pass coverage lanes early. Kept an eye on L. Roberson. You wonder if they spied on him on that play. And that way he wasn't able to get upfield and make a big play with his legs. Iowa State was looking for the block. Didn't get it. Todd Miller, and that'll be a halo violation. Soon as he grabbed it, he was dropped by Rose. Once again, tough call for the official to make. Unfortunately for, for Mr. Rose, a little thorn involved. There you go. Take a look at the All-State replay from the back. Have to have two yards around the punt returner. Did he give it to him? I, had to, That's a I am so tired of this call. We go through it every single time. It negates excellent plays. Ball's caught. Two yards. Contact, Tell me there weren't two yards there. It is, it Tell is me there were not two yards there. I'm not going to do it. You're and, bigger than me. And I'm, and I'm not yelling at the officials because I think they make their job impossible with that yeah. rule. At that speed, how can you tell what's two yards, two and a half, one and a half? You, you, you made it a difficult call that they shouldn't have to make. If we had a game where that hasn't been a factor? No, no. We were, we're on game nine now. Oh. We've had it every single game. Well, bottom line is Iowa State gets a big break. They get their best field position of the evening right at midfield. Wallace keeps, throws it out of the flat, passes complete to Whitmer. Jack Whitford, the junior out of Grinnell, Iowa. Now the fourth member of our broadcast team. Let's see if he's got the purple jacket on. Our own Craig Sager. Sags. Well, Zach Butler continues to be worked on on the sidelines. He came off the field in a lot of pain. Told the training staff he heard his knee pop. However, they checked out the knee. He wears a protective brace from a cartilage injury he had his freshman year. That is all right. They have retaped the back of the ankle. He's going to walk on it and see if he can go. That's great news, Craig, for Iowa State. I'm betting that he gives it a try. I think so, too. He knows what's on the line tonight. Straight ahead running in the offensive line of Iowa State. They like running over that left side, opening up the hole for Michael Wagner, the junior out of West Covina, California. Had that great game against Nebraska. The 5'7", running back at 107 yards versus the Huskers. Had the game-winning touchdown last week against Missouri with 32 ticks left. Yeah, went over 100 yards again last week. Running well, and he's an excellent blocker, as we've seen, or as we saw earlier right this year against Texas Tech. <laughs> he's had a couple of them. Second and six. Four wide receivers set for the Cyclones. Wallace likes this route into the corner pass. Intercepted by Kansas State's Randy Jordan. But well, we do have a penalty flag down. And I uh, feel as if the official called it incomplete also. Let's see what let's see what they call. Looked like excellent coverage again by Randy Jordan inside the receiver because it appeared to me from this vantage point, offensive interference going over the top. Watch Jordan, number 24, playing on the inside. Looks. He's got an arm on him, yeah, but you see that all the time. That's an interception if they're going to... I think they're going to call interference. I think they're going to call interference. They're going to call it on the inside arm of Randy Jordan. Okay. Early bias, right? I'm a now defensive you're a back. DB. Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's interference on the defense. 15 yards from the previous spot. 
<laughs> well, what should he have done? I mean, let's talk about what Randy Jordan. I mean, it, it, the only thing he could have careful. done, the only thing he could have done, was try to run without sticking his arm out into mm -hmm. the into the receiver as but he's that's running. Reflex, isn't he's it? doing that to contact him so he knows where the receiver right. is. And you know something? Nine times out of ten, you don't see that call made. Nine times right. out of ten, you know they're running downfield. He knows where he is because he never pushed off with it. Yeah. You know, he just knew where the receiver was. It was a field call. Well, penalties have helped set up for Wallace in the Cyclones. First and ten, ball on about the 21-yard line. Here comes the pressure, throws it out of the flat. Pass is incomplete. Lane Danielson had the hands on it. The junior out of Dyke, Iowa, couldn't come down with it. After Dan McCartney, you've uh, started out the game in such shaky fashion. Now you've got great field position, second and 10 on the 21. This is a must seven. I don't think three points is going to help him. It give him a little confidence, maybe. A little confidence, but you would hate to think that you walk away from here without getting seven, given the golden opportunity that you received. Keep an eye on number one, Bobby Walker, in that Kansas State defense. He was limping after that last play. He's the free safety. That's him back there, and he'll be in coverage against the Kansas, excuse me, the Iowa State receivers. From the shotgun, miscommunication between Seneca Wallace and Jamal Montgomery. Montgomery broke in, Seneca threw out. Twice now he's tried to hit Montgomery. The first time I thought Jamal short-armed it a little bit on a slant route looking for the defensive back. On this one, as you mentioned, miscommunication. You know, we talked about a couple of weeks ago after Iowa State beat Nebraska. A lot of people said that defined the program. We said at that time, nope, not unless they win the North. That'll define the program. And Dan McCartney agrees with that. And six defensive backs in the game for Kansas State. They're in their dime package, showing blitz. Might have had movement right here. Yes, I saw the tackle move. Let's see if the officials say that the defensive person forced him to move by him, him going unabated towards the quarterback. Well, they're going to talk it over. Watch the tackle. The See right there? Yeah. Well, I think he saw the center kind of pick up his head, too. Full start. On the that's what made him jump Five out. Still third down. Again, Iowa State putting themselves in difficult positions. Now third and 15. Remember, the backup center's in the game, too. Sometimes making the line calls, mm -hmm. the way just the motion of, of how he does it can throw things off. If you look at the penalties early, both of them with three. The Wildcats have given up more yardage. From the 26-yard line, third and 15. Iowa State brings four. Wallace deep into the flat spot. Down to the one-yard line, it's Lane Danielson. <laughs> What a great timing pattern and throw by Seneca Wallace. And he beat double coverage on this play. 24-yard gain, and Iowa State's in business on the two-yard line. But on the left side of the screen, Lane Danielson was shadowed inside and out. And what he did was break the ball, break, break his route out. James Dunnigan's supposed to be on the outside, not able to make the coverage. He had help from Jesse Tetwan inside. That's a big game for Iowa State. Straight ahead, Wagner, nothing to it. He's going to be stacked up at the one-yard line. Wallace threw for 425 yards, but this is beautiful. Look at this. See how he Laughter. beat him? Dunnigan is supposed to be on the outside on that one because when you shadow two guys, one takes outside, one takes inside. But Jesse Tetwan, number 23, had the inside. James Dunnigan was beaten by the move by Lane Danielson, which you're taught to ignore if you have outside leverage. He forced him inside and went outside and was wide open. Excellent route by Lane Danielson. He had a career high, 152 yards receiving last week versus Missouri. Part of that 425 package by Wallace throwing the ball. Second and goal, balls at the one. Knocking Seguin the tight ends. And again, we have movement. And if it's Iowa State, it'll be their fourth penalty. That's about what they average a game. See, at this stage oh. of the game, they should be settled down. I think this time it's they caught Kansas, Kansas State. State yeah. Boy, talk about momentum swings. Well, you go up 13-0, you miss an extra point, and you can just feel a little deflation coming out of the 
Kansas State sideline. I think the biggest one was the penalty on the punt return by Newman. Because mm -hmm. that changed, it changed, it took away a great return. Yeah. And it was huge field position. Couple that with the pass interference call against Jordan. They took away an interception, negated an interception against Kansas State. And you see why we're down where we are with Iowa State yeah, having the football. Right. Disconcerting signals on the defense. Disconcerting <laughs> signals. That is a first. I have not heard that one in that a long is, time. You know what that is? They were barking. Well, the quarter, you're barking out calls that sound similar to the quarterback's mm -hmm. cadence. So, in other words, if, if they say the word go as their signal, right. down, set, go, 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 and you're on the other side saying show, 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 they will nail you on the defensive side for trying to jam the signals. And that's not a call I've seen used or heard in a long time as we take a look at the Kansas State bench. <laughs> Highly exercised. On that side. I'm telling you. Yes. Gotta be careful, though. <laughs> not a call you get every day. Fortunately nope. here, 15 yards will not be it, but it'll be half the distance to the goal line, right? Yep. <laughs> and a first yeah. down. Which is about, <laughs> what, eight inches? <laughs> and you don't want to give up first and goal here. No. Now they're going to explain it to Dan McCarney about what's going, what happened on the call. And letting him know. And, of course, Dan is handling it quite calmly because he's like, yeah, I got you. I got you. I, 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 I hear you. Cooper, you know you're calling a heck of a game tonight. <laughs> I just want to let you know. Good call on the interference. <laughs> That's right. You, you, you've done nothing but good things today. You know, excellent job on, on, on them holding on the punt return. And right now, that disconcerting signals, you know, you're doing a great job. I'm going to write you up to the league this That's week. Right. Great job. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'll go back out there. Now give me one more. Yeah. I need six here. Well, the situation, though, with 4.51 on the first. Kansas State with that 13 nothing lead, second and goal from the one for the Cyclones. Remember, not many teams have been down here. Second man through over the top, Wagner, touchdown Iowa State. Resiliency, part of Iowa State's M.O. this year, but they've also gotten helped by some costly penalties in Kansas State. And this time the pile moved, you notice that? Up front, earlier in the game, we were talking about how the defensive mm -hmm. front of Kansas State was moving the line of scrimmage back towards Seneca Wallace. On that play, the front three guys, the center and the two guards for Iowa State, moved Kansas State's guys back into the end zone. Enough room for Wagner to dive across for the touchdown. Adam Beneke. Extra point is good. He's 40 for 40 on the air, and Iowa State right back in it. Spotted Kansas State with a 13 0 lead. Wagner gives him seven, and it's a six point ball game. Check out what's coming to TBS. He must be our new neighbor. For the first time on network television. That's Jimmy the two of today. Bruce Willis. Everybody dies. Sooner or later. Matthew Perry. He's a little upset. I've managed to upset a mass murderer. The whole nine yards. 8 Eastern Sunday night on TBS Superstation. Along with Charles Davis, Sarah Andrews, and Craig Sager, I'm Ron Dooley. Welcome you back to beautiful Manhattan, Kansas. Temperatures were in the 70s today and the almost 30 years I've been coming here, I've never seen a 70 degrees in November. But we'll you, take it. You know what I did this afternoon, don't you? Before we came over? Went house hunting. Do house hunting. You're going to move here, right? I love it here in Manhattan, Kansas. People are excellent. And when you talk about weather like this in November, right. are you kidding me? Watch next week, though. In love it here. Yeah. Watch next week. It'll be like 30 degrees. Short kick. Newman. This time he's going to be covered up as he crosses the 10 up to about the 11-yard line. A lot more enthusiasm on Iowa State's team. Here's Craig Sager. 
Well, we mentioned how unsettled Iowa State looked at the beginning of the game. Well, after that last touchdown, Dan McCartney literally ran up and down the sidelines talking to everybody he could talk to. Talking to the defense, talking to the offense, saying, listen, we can move the ball on these guys. We're okay. We're going to play great tonight. I think, obviously, it was a message from when they had the unsettling experience at Oklahoma and never recovered. So experience, yes, they have learned from that game, and he says, we're going to win tonight. All right, Craig. How about him coaching those guys up? We've heard about Dan McCartney's great halftime speeches and, the, and striking the right chord at halftime. He knew today he couldn't wait that long. Had That's to strike right. it early. Wilson and Sproles in the backfield. Roberson back to Sproles. Crosses the 10, slips a little tackle, and gets over the 15 up to the 17-yard line. How does Kansas State use this first quarter as far as trying different sets, trying different options and counters? in light of what's going to happen the rest of the game. Well, you hear about people utilizing scripts for ball games, and people always say, now, why do you utilize a script? You show them different formations, run different plays, maybe the same play from a different set, and find out what's working for you, file it away, and realize when you need to use it later on in the ball game. Take what works and keep it, discard what's not working, and make sure you know the right time to pop it again later on. Six up seven, second down and three. This time, Iowa State's defensive line right there for the stop. <laughs> Good surge by the D-line that time. Our first and ten line is brought to you by Home Depot. And now Iowa State's have a little home improvement on that D-line from those first couple of series. Brings up a third down and three, and Roberson will drop back into the shotgun. They have that whole quarterback run package, and now he goes, now he goes back under center. Changing the play with an audible. And back again to shotgun. And Iowa State showing blitz. They bring five. Here they come. Look out. Roberson looking, throwing, incomplete. The pressure was put on by strong safety Anthony Forrest, the sophomore out of Fort Worth, Texas. And John Scaldini wanted to mix up the blitzes, mix up a couple of coverages, and they did. And that was a strong safety blitz out of the nickel package. And this is where Kansas State gets hurt sometimes in their pass game because they're not big on throwing to the tight end. They're not big on throwing to the running backs in short yardage situations. They like to throw the ball downfield. So on third and short, if you can't get it downfield, you don't have the guys to go to in the short zones. Well, Travis Brown and Bill Slater says the most improved player on the team gets a good roll after a not-so-good kick. And it'll be down at the 26-yard line. 56 yards on the kick. Travis, there's no style points, brother. Don't worry about it. No, and Todd Miller, the punt returner for Iowa State, made a tactical error. Had to be over there close enough to pick it up if necessary and just fall down so you don't give up what we call hidden yardage. Mm -hmm. Well, our next telecast will be next Saturday at 7 o'clock Eastern on TBS as the 25th-ranked Arizona State Sun Devils take on the number 10-ranked USC Trojans. That is going to be a barn burner in the Coliseum. Yeah, and it will have a big impact on the Pac-10 title. Looking forward mm -hmm. to watching that game. Iowa State getting on the board the last time they had the football. Trailing by six. Inside of 250 to play in the first. Straight ahead running. Wagner picks up a couple on the play. Michael Wagner has really improved in all facets of his game out of Bishop Amat High School in West Covina, California. Here is a young man that, you know, a lot of people said, well, you know, we're not sure about him. We're not sure about his pass protection. We're not sure about his size. And I think he stepped up to every challenge they've thrown at him. He has, and he's picked up a lot of the slack left from Hiawatha Rutland, who had, big, who had a big game against Florida State early. Got hurt a few weeks ago. He's probably not going to play tonight. On second and eight from the shotgun, Wallace throws it out of the flat, wide open, passes complete again to Danielson. He crosses the 45 up to the 46-yard line, Randy Jordan on the tackle. Well, we talk about Michael Wagner, not only can he run the ball well, but boy, he can level a couple of blocks too. This was the game where we were in town and it's given we were in Ames, and there's the big hit on Ricky Saylor, the defensive back for Texas Tech. Then last week, watch him. This one's a straight up, not a blindside shot. Just straight one-on-one. -on -one. Gets Lance Young into the end zone against Missouri. Pickup of 19 on the play, and Iowa State can move the football. Oh 
Will a sprint draw to Wagner. Crosses the 50 down to the 48-yard line. Rashad Washington from that strong safety spot. Good mix-up of plays by Steve Bricky and Dan McCarney. They like that little pass into the flat, and then they come back with a little run. There's Steve Bricky, the offensive coordinator for Iowa State. He's the guy who works a 12-play script early on down, based on down and distance. They're probably off of that now. There's Zach Butler, the center, number 68, looking like he's ready to go give it a try again. But right now, Iowa State has not abandoned the run either. You notice that? That's Stayed right. with it, and it's working for them. Second and four passes. Tip, almost caught, incomplete. Pass was tipped by Melvin Williams, that right defensive end, a senior out of St. Louis, Missouri. He is probably their best pass rusher, the big guy at 6'3", 270 pounds. And comes into the game with four sacks. Breaks up the pass. Watch him to the left side. They, they, what happened was you couldn't get him down. You notice how the offensive lineman tried to cut him at the legs? He was able to play off the block, stay on his feet, keep his arms in the air, and pop the ball up, potentially an interception. Good job by the receiver actually making sure that no one else got to the football. Iowa State, one of three on third down conversion so far tonight. Wallace is dangerous. Throwing across his body wide open. Overthrow. Intended for the tight end, Kenny Seguin, the sophomore out of Ankeny, Iowa, was about six inches too high. I think he just mistimed his jump. I think he, well, he's also trying to get 252 pounds up, in, up the in the air. We're talking thick piece of toast there. And you notice he had stopped his feet on the route. Kenny Siege in number 85. He'll be back on the left side of our screen. This is a long throwback, and this is where Coach says, no, no, no. But when it's Seneca Wallace, it's okay. You see what I mean? I think that he was on the way down as the yep. ball got to him. A pass that had a chance to be completed. <laughs> Coaches always tell you, don't throw back across oh, field. Yeah. But with Seneca Wallace, they just say, okay. <laughs> right, go ahead. <laughs> because he knows what he's doing. Well, Blankenship booms this one, and it'll be out of the end zone. Or I should say Tony Yelp boomed it. 48 yards on the kick. Kansas State will take over first and 10 from their own 20. Here's Aaron Andrews. Okay, Ron, well, you and Charles talked earlier about that great block Michael Wagner put on Ricky Saylor in that Texas Tech game. In fact, Wagner has two other blocks just like that this season, which is why he has won the Sledgehammer Award three times this season. Now, the award goes to the player with the best hit in the game, and it's an actual sledgehammer. He gets his number put on the stick, and it sits right by his bench in the locker room. And if Wagner wins it the most this season, he gets to keep that sledgehammer. And he's going to use that sledgehammer strictly for good, not for evil. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Roberson keeps nice ball thin. Pass is complete to the tight end. Thomas Hill inside the 40, still rumbling. Inside the 30 to the 24-yard line. Six yards for the junior from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Remember what I said about Kansas State not using the tight end? Watch Thomas Hill coming across field on a drag route and L. Roberson a beautiful ball. So as I said, they don't really throw to the tight end, you know. <laughs> <laughs> except, except there. Except right there. And what a great route. And Thomas Hill awfully hard to bring down. That's only his 12th reception on the year. Now Kansas State knocking on the door again. And they moved field position again. Iowa State had it going their way the last couple of series. And now Kansas State has them back on their heels again. Straight ahead running. Well, nothing doing. Matt Ward, Tyson Smith coming up to make the stop. Darren Sproles, the ball carrier, and that's the way the first quarter will end. Well, they have trusted Bill Snyder in the past. We have played 15 minutes in Manhattan, Kansas. And Kansas State leads Iowa State by six. Look at the numbers from the first 15 minutes between Iowa State and Kansas State. Total yards, all Kansas State. And look at the turnovers. One for Iowa State, which cost them as Kansas State jumped out to a 13-0 first quarter lead. And Iowa State answered. That's where we are right now as we start quarter number two. Glad you're with us tonight. Hope you're enjoying tonight's game. 
Quick pass by Roberson down to the 17-yard line. Taco Wallace, the senior out of Canoga Park, California, who has really come on the last couple of games. He is becoming the go-to receiver. And a good job by L. Roberson, the quarterback for Kansas State, spotted the blitz. Strong safety lightning blitz by Jermaine Billups, number six, coming straight at him. So it was directly in his line of vision. Called for the hot read to Taco Wallace. He completed the quick pass. Hey, if Kansas State recognizes that blitz like that, they could really hit Iowa State with a couple of big plays as this game wears on. From the I formation, third down and two, and again, Roberson tried to change the play, now he's going to call a timeout. And actually, his tight end, Thomas Hill, number 88, recognized that the play clock was down and called the timeout. Good recognition. 14-20 to play in the first half. 13-7 is our score. to the Little Apple, number 21, Iowa State, trailing number 12, Kansas State, 13 to 17. And our first and 10 line is brought to you by Home Depot. Right now that first and 10 line, only two yards away for Kansas State, facing third and two. Wallace moving around. Handed off to Sproles, and he is going to be stacked for a loss. Good job by Tyson Smith coming in with that first penetration, the junior out of West Des Moines, Iowa, from that defensive end spot. Lost one on the play, brings up a fourth down and three. You surprised that Bill Snyder's going to kick the field goal? No, I'm not surprised at all here because it's fourth and about four yards. And the, the last play was stuffed. Didn't show any ability to move the line of scrimmage. Something they were doing earlier in the ball game. I think right now you try and get three points and get out. But you have to admit, the missed extra points nagging in the back of their mind. They need a field goal here for confidence. Bill Ream hasn't missed at this distance. Kick is up and away, and it'll split the uprights. Joe Reem now 8 of 10 on field goal attempts. Kansas State increases their lead. TBS Big Play Saturday is presented in part by Best Buy and Discover Card. It pays to discover, so use your Discover Card to buy the latest stuff at Best Buy. And turn on the fun. Now they salvage something on it, but, uh, you know, I don't like talking moral victories. Most coaches don't like even mentioning those words. But I think if you're Dan McCartney and considering what happened in that first quarter, that was a moral victory. Yeah, the, the old term now, the, the term, I should say old, the term that people use in business now, win-win. Right. I think it was a win for both sides in, the sense, in this sense. Kansas State kicked the field goal after having mm -hmm. extra point block, so that has to feel good to them, although, of course, they wanted a touchdown. For Iowa State, it feels good stuffing them on third and short and forcing them to kick the field goal after they had had a march downfield. So if there's ever a win-win situation, I think we just saw it. Although, you know, points went on the board for right. Kansas State. Well, three years ago, Iowa State took a 28-7 lead against Kansas State, only to lose 35-28. There are a few players that played in that game that are still on the team. But the other seven games during this eight-game Kansas State win streak have not been close. Average score, 43-10. to That's why it was so important for Iowa State to start out strongly in tonight's game. And look at the big part there, 271 rush yards, which tells you what? It tells you that Kansas State was a lot more physical mm -hmm. in those games than Iowa State. And that's what Dan McCartney was referring to last night when we talked to him about we have to give them a reason to respect us. And that has to be done with some physical play up front. Well, Iowa State will take over, first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. So far, they've only been able to generate 83 yards offense. And here's what Dan McCartney has done. And, you know, you look back over the last couple of years, and I remember back in 1998, he was thinking, I'm gone. There's no way they're bringing me back. Yeah, when you take a look at that 3-8 and eight record, people thought they were going to make more improvement than that. People had no idea how far the program had fallen at that point. Again, props to the Iowa State administration, Gene Smith at the time, the AD, for having the patience, and it's being rewarded. Well, Zach Butler, the big center, is back on the field for the Cyclones. Brian Thompson is now the running back. Wallace keeps it. Running room, first down, and he scampers out of bounds. 
You know, the last couple of games, Charles, have you gotten the sense that Seneca's using his legs a little more than he had in the first part of the season? I think he was married to the idea that he was a pocket passer and didn't really want to get out of the pocket, want to show everyone his skills. But here on this 14-yard scamper, it's a quarterback run game. Good job by Michael Wax. Give me Brian Thompson, number two, as the lead blocker. But, you know, we've been watching Kansas State's run games spawned by Michael Bishop, who's quarterback here. A lot of other people run it the same way. Yeah. But that package started with Michael Bishop. First and 10 from the 34-yard line. Danielson in motion. Second man through is Thompson. The redshirt freshman out of Plantation, Florida. Well, Zach Butler's trying to play after being injured. Here's what happened the last play. Him driving on Tank Reese, number 30. He's got a hitch, though, still. Yeah, he's got a little hitch in his giddy-up, and Tank gives him a little shove, knocks him off balance. But you notice he snapped with his left hand, snaps it right-handed mm -hmm. when the quarterback's under center. On a shotgun snap, he snaps with his left hand. Those ambidextrous centers, <laughs> you know? You you're, just never know what you're going to get. You're a wealth of knowledge today. And, and we asked the coaches, why, do you do, why does he do that? You know what they said? We have no idea. Half of them didn't even know he did it that way. <laughs> As long as he gets there, they don't care. Second down and seven with the right hand. Here comes Seneca Wallace. Looking for something. He's going to take the smart route. Go out of bounds at about the 34-yard line. No gain on the play. No loss on the play. I want to get back to Brian Thompson, the young redshirt freshman running back number two. Here is a young man that... You know, you, you, we've seen tape of him the last couple of games. He has this burst of speed, and that is something the Iowa State offense has really lacked. Wagner's a pretty good speed guy, Rutland more of a north-south, but Thompson adds a completely different dimension. And that's why he's getting more playing time, because in their option game, they felt as if they had a few opportunities where they play should have broken bigger than they have. So that's why he's getting his chance now to make big plays in this offense. The crowd jumped. is loud, and everybody jumped on the right-hand side. I think it's going to be, unfortunately, number 78, Colin Menard. Hate to single out a guy, but I think Colin moved a little fast. And, you know, once you get that move... Right the snap. Full start on the offense. High yeah. yards. Still when you get 306 down. pounds in motion early, see Colin right there? Yeah. <laughs> when you get 306 moving in one direction, you don't recall it. <laughs> no, no. It's, you're not going to stop it. That's sure. Now, we also saw Menard there on the right side. They're flipping guys all over the place on this offensive line of Iowa State. Trying to find the right matchups. It looks like can't, Iowa State has to take a timeout. I think they had, a tro had trouble with their personnel grouping. Who should have been in the ball game on the set that was called from the sideline? We also have a penalty flag down. I wonder if they're going to call the penalty of the Did substitution they? rule. I think that's what it's going to be. Illegal substitution on the offense. Five yards, still third down. Well, they tried to call the timeout before the official saw it. Not so fast. 12-33 left in the half. Iowa State trailing Kansas State. State called the timeout. They said they didn't want it. Seneca Wallace threw an incomplete pass to Lance Young. There was a penalty on the play, and Kansas State declined, and now Iowa State forced to kick it away. And it is not good. It's a pretty decent bounce, but still not very good. Goes down to the 45-yard line. 31 yards on the kick. Let's send it to the big game house in Ernie Johnson. Hey, thank you very much, Ron. While top uh, or number one seed at Oklahoma was losing today, or the top ranked team in the land, number two Miami stayed unbeaten, beating Tennessee 26-3. That's uh, Kellen Winslow Jr. from Ken Dorsey. A little payback, I would say, for Miami because the only <laughs> other meeting between those two teams, Charles Davis and Tennessee, beating Miami 35-7 in the 86 Sugar Bowl, and Charles picked one off that day. <laughs> He's the man. Do you remember it? <laughs> oh, how could I forget that? That was a huge day for us. Roberson with a pitch. Back to Sproles. Takes a hit. Crosses the 50 down to the 45-yard line. Close to the first down. How about the crazy day in football, buddy? Oklahoma losing. Yeah, two, two of our un two unbeaten teams went down again today after last okay, week. Okay, let, let's, see, let's see the man here. There he is. 
blazing speed, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you know, my coach always told me that Look we. you showboating, bro. <laughs> my coach always told me they didn't time me, time my 40 time with a stopwatch. It's more of a sundial. <laughs> and you just saw why. <laughs> Academic All American, too, huh? Well, you know, I, we, we had All American, too. I want to make sure I get it right. It's Academic All SEC. Otherwise, I'll be out of a job. This has happened to certain <laughs> coaches along the way. I want to make sure my bio is correct. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Best <laughs> check mine. I guess I should take that Heisman <laughs> Trophy thing off of it. Huh? Yeah, well, you know. Yeah, well. I, I thought you should have won it. Well, it was close. <laughs> it was a lot of fun playing back then, but right now when you, you look at Kansas State and Darren Sproles now over 1,000 yards, the sixth player in Kansas State history, also has a chance for his sixth straight 100-yard game tonight, tying Isaac Jackson's record. He set that 1973 for KSU. Going to have to burn the time up. Play clock got down to one. Twice that's happened to them now. Mm -mm -mm. Now remember Iowa State's timeout that was wiped away. It was wiped away because there was a penalty on the play, so they could say that they didn't need it. Bill Snyder wants to talk about it, facing second and seven. Kansas State facing second and seven from the 41 yard line of Iowa State and I think what we saw there with El Roberson is part of that maturation process learning to do the little things clock management being number one. Yeah, and I'm not sure how much of that's his fault because sometimes you have to be up on the line of scrimmage by the time the clock gets a certain number in order to make all those looks and reads. Iowa State showed blitz they backed off Taco Wallace. They're going to mark it at about the 33 yard line. Well, he is talented. There's no question about that. Great, great read there because he could have handed the ball inside to the fullback, read it, and took it deep. Now he sneaks it across for their second touchdown. And what a beautiful throw to Thomas Hill, number 88. Similar to the throw we just saw him complete to the sideline. We're seeing the flashes of talent that has these coaches and fans here in Manhattan drooling about what El Roberson can do. Well, he's just a junior. First and ten now for Kansas State, and once again the onus goes on this defensive line of Iowa State. They try the left side. Roberson tripped up, reaches forward to the 30-yard line, picks up four on the play. Nick Leaders, the true freshman out of Omaha, Nebraska. Say this young man, this Nick Leaders, he is a great story. His dad, Mike, was a linebacker at Iowa State. Unfortunately, passed away from leukemia. But uh, still, this young man, nothing phases leaders. No, and his brother Andy is also here, a backup linebacker. And I believe Andy wears a, a shirt underneath his jersey that his mm -hmm. father wore when he was all big eight linebacker for the Cyclones. A great family story. And they got him out of where? Lincoln, Nebraska. Lincoln, Nebraska. <laughs> That'll work. They had one day to go up this year. On second down, straight drop back, penalty flag is thrown, and they're going to whistle the play dead. Yeah, I think it'll go against Kansas State for a legal procedure. I think the offensive line jumped. Quarterback backed out of it early. And they had a few things going on there. Yeah, they were, <laughs> that, that's a smorgasbord of penalties yes, there. Pick one. Yeah, one from column yards. A, one from column B. <laughs> it's only five yards pick. You see Bill Snyder. Full start on the offense. Five yards, still second down. So Bill Snyder right on to the next play. You notice that? He's right on to the next one. Watch El Roberson. Hut, 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 and he's pulling out, and the ball's not there. That's the illegal motion. He's already made that move. Both teams now with five penalties apiece. And Bill Snyder will address the penalties, but oh, you notice yeah. that he was right on to the next play because there's nothing you can do about that one there. You know, come on, guys, get it together, but here's the next call. That brings up a second down and 13. Comes right, throws over the middle. Complete to James Carey, running room. Gets down to the 20-yard line, and that'll be good enough for Kansas State first down. James Carey. Carey, the big junior out of Homestead, Florida. Originally committed to Auburn, and well, Kansas State fans have big plans for this young man. at 6'5", 180 pounds. Watch him. It's a jailbreak screen. will come inside motion and then come right in here and catch the ball. And now you get all the big guys downfield throwing blocks for him, and this play is designed to go back across the green. A 16-yard gain for Kansas State. Nice call by Bill Snyder mm -hmm. and Ron Hudson. I was just thinking Terry gets about 10, 15 pounds on him. Oh, man. Roberson looking for the option, changes directions. 
string it out. Being chased, takes a hit as he gets to the 15-yard line. Anthony Forrest is the one who really put the pressure on L. Roberson. And a great job by Anthony Forrest, number 17 for Iowa State, because he stayed at home. What that means is he didn't chase and get out of his rush lane until he knew where the ball was going, until the ball was declared. He's able to stay back on the other side of the field so that L. Roberson couldn't circle back and turn the corner. Nice job of defense and playing his lanes. Second down and five now for Kansas State. And again, L. Roberson changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Iowa State brings five. Throw it out in the Taco Wallace's hands. He gets down to the five and another Kansas State first down. And what was the difference there? Plenty of time mm -hmm. on the play clock in order to call the audible. The second part of that was plenty of time to throw the football. An excellent job by the offensive line and a beautiful strike by Roberson to Taco Wallace in the 11 yard gain, first and goal. Third catch, third catch for Taco Wallace, who was blanked on catching the football against Texas. First and goal, they put it at the four-yard line. They have the big three in the backfield. Roberson keeps it. Pitches back. Ayusaba, touchdown, Kansas State. putting that big backfield in it in their score package. They call it Nick Vick and Thick. <laughs> That's Thick. Ayusaba, the six foot, 260 pound true freshman out of Blackwood, New Jersey. Seven touchdowns this year for the youngsters. Yeah, Victor Mann, number 42. Nick Kohisel, number 39. Vick and Nick. And Thick, as you just alluded to, Ayusaba. Another one of those little line of New Jersey runners. Mm -hmm. He scored a lot of touchdowns earlier in the year, and now he gets another one in a crucial situation. Green for the extra point. Already had one block tonight. Gets a pretty good cheer from the crowd, but Ayusaba takes it the final four yards. Boy, you get that 260 going in one direction, Charles. Hard to stop. And it truly runs downhill, and here it is coming right at you at home. Watch your easy chair. Look at Victor Mann, number 42. Excellent block, clearing some space. You don't need to clear a lot for the big fella. There they are, the score formation. That's what the score is what they call is the terminology that Kansas State uses for that package. The fans and the media love calling it Nick Vick and Thick. <laughs> and Thick is the word. Salva, 260. Anyone want to do the math on that? 730. 730, 730 baby. Pounds. All running at you. Okay, that's truly running downhill when those three are gone because the field will tilt. <laughs> in their direction. <laughs> There's no crowd on the field except when they're on the field. <laughs> exactly. Now instead of a crowd, you have depression. <laughs> now the bottom line is though for Kansas State, they've now opened up a 16-point advantage. And again, Iowa State in the hole that Dan McCarty did not want to get into against this team because the Kansas State defense in the second half becomes awfully difficult to score on. They are very tough, seem to get stronger as the game goes on. And, and, and confidence is a big part of that. When the offense is scoring and gives them that big lead, they feel a responsibility to protect it. Remember, top five in total defense in the NCAA the last five years. Does that tell you about how they play defense in Manhattan? That tells you something about it. Young and Wagner back for the kick. Wagner's going to let it roll out of the end zone, and Iowa State has never had the benefit of good field position tonight. Well, we brought our soapbox to Manhattan, Kansas. Let's see who jumped on it this week. 23rd of the big game out. Pass is complete. First down, Iowa State up to about the 28-yard line. Pass completed to Jamal Montgomery. 
whatever happened to going to a ball game and just having a good time and rooting for your rooting for your squad? <laughs> I know. I mean, we got we got to pit him against that kid from Washington State, though, wasn't it? Oh, that was, was that Washington? Yeah, yeah. We, we talked about big the big guy. guy almost took a knee on us. Almost took a knee. <laughs> Montgomery's got a hitch in his get along now. And that's not good because this is a team that's had a great run of good health all year long, and they're not very deep. Talking about Iowa State, they can ill afford any injuries. Well, it didn't get a first down. Second down and one. Straight ahead running. It's Brian Thompson, the redshirt freshman we alluded to earlier. You know, all year long, Dan McCartney and offensive coordinator Steve Bricker said, we wanted to use this young man, and the time finally came, and now he's getting more and more playing time as the weeks go on. And people will ask, well, why didn't you just use him before? Well, part of that was his responsibility, being a good pass protector, knowing all of the schemes. As he continued to learn those and become proficient in those areas, that's allowed him to get more playing time. Because you don't want to put a guy back there who can't block for Seneca Wallace. Well, you can see pretty even as far as pass and rush. 13 rush, 14 pass. Danielson in motion. They haven't run any of their patented trick plays yet. Wallace in big trouble. Scampering just going to dump it off into the Kansas State bench. And a penalty flag is thrown. Cooper Castleberry, the referee, just quietly walked over and laid it down at the 15-yard line. Not much fanfare with the flag. It seemed to me that he was out of the pocket. Yeah, but he was way out of the pocket. But they are calling him for intentional grounding. Now, there's no receivers in the area at all. Did he hit a lineman with the ball? I mean, if he hit, well, if he hit his own offensive lineman. Well, that's intentional grounding. Let's see if the call is here. Intentional grounding on the offense. Russell down at the spot of the foul. Second down. Well, he was out of the pocket, and everybody was moving to the right. See, I remember preseason, the big emphasis was if he's outside the tackle to tackle box, you pretty much get rid of it with impunity. So yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe I missed that next, missed the next part of the meeting. Uh, I think you and I were getting a data <laughs> check. A little draw play. And we have another penalty flag throw. Thompson gets up to the 15-yard line. Let's go back to the previous play. It may have been because there was a lineman there. That's the only guy that was open. <laughs> <laughs> and he was covered pretty well, too. He's covered pretty well. That was his offensive lineman who wasn't even thinking about catching the ball. He was thinking about blocking. So, in any event, there's another flag on the field. And Iowa State again mm. going backwards. This will be their seventh penalty. Field position and a clip. So, you get one of those. In any event, it's a big penalty. It's a big yardage one. Remember, what do they say about, about real estate? Location, location, location. That's it. Well, for these guys, it's field position because as the field position moves against them, now you're playing to just try and punt it out of mm -hmm. there. And then the last time that happened, Kansas State got great field position off of a bad pump by Blankenship. What happened? They went down and scored. Field position is the key to everything during a ball game. And, and Dan McCartney hasn't had it hasn't ha in this game at all. Just a couple of times, and when they did, they actually were able to run their offense and score a touchdown. Early on the offense, that penalty is declined. After the play, there was a clip by the offense. That penalty is accepted. It'll be third down, half the distance to the goal. Well, now that goes back even farther. It's third down in a bundle for Iowa State. Our, our man Sam Polis here has found the rule, and the reason that he was penalized was because if the save or loss of yards or conserved time for a pass is thrown when there's no eligible teammate player who has a reasonable opportunity to catch it, that's when you're going to get flagged. Mm -hmm. And the lineman is not a guy, not no, a no. guy who's eligible to catch it. That's a not good reasonable. Call by the officials. Thank you, Sam. Third down and a bunch, 34. Here comes Kansas State on the blitz. Iowa State swallows, dumps it off again to Danielson. Gives him a little bit of breathing room as he crosses the 20 up to about the 22-yard line. Pick up a 14 on the play. A big play Saturday keeps rolling on after the game with Matt and Cherie on the movie bowl. And tonight's movie couldn't be any more fitting.
Dumb and Dumber after the game on the Movie Bowl, only on TBS Superstation. I think that's something to do with us. So you got the memo yeah. that, that in honor of, uh, honor, <laughs> honor of you two, we're showing Dumb and Dumber. You got that one too? Who wrote this copy? <laughs> yeah. Now uh, Troy Blankenship is going to kick. Yelp and Blankenship have been alternating, punting the ball, and this is a dandy. Newman. Back at the 33-yard line, and why don't we just throw the flag as soon as it's kicked, and we'll just save some time. 46 yards on the punt. Tell me this won't come up in the AFCA meetings, American Federation of <laughs> American Football Coaches Association. Ooh. Tell me this won't come up big. How many athletic directors are sick of hearing about it each week where their coach comes in and says, someone's got to do something about this? You know, all the rules committee guys are just being yeah. inundated all year long with this call. You hurt both sides with it. Whatever happened to just signaling fair catch and playing it that way? If you want to penalize a guy who makes a bad hit, penalize him big anyway, but you don't have to do it with this two-yard rule. Again, this time I think they actually have it right. I don't think there are two yards for him. Non-contact any event, the it's always team. going to be a judgment call. Ten it's very close. Yeah. First down. You know, it's very close. How can you tell? You know, I mean, really, how can you tell? From this angle, looks awfully good, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, now the official is on the spot, so he's right there. I give him credit for being in the right position. But again, why do we put them in that spot to make that call? That is one of the worst judgment calls that this guy has to make. It's hard breaking right down here. for a defender. See? Yeah. He's right, he, you know, how do you break down after a 45-yard sprint? <laughs> That's right. And, oh, yeah, two-yard rule, too. Roberson, nice ball fake play action. Iowa State susceptible. Pass is complete to Tyler Wallace. That's what makes L. Roberson so dangerous. And credit Kansas State, what they've done is they've tailored a lot of plays to that young man's abilities. And this went to the tune of 15 yards because we're so used to the Kansas State running game being effective. That's Garen Sproles, who's gone over 1,000 yards for the season tonight. L. Roberson in the quarterback run game and option games. So they have to watch that. And then, oh, by the way, he bootlegs it out and throws it to a receiver. And then we're back to keeping it on the ground. Good solid hit by Matt Word right in the middle. Aaron Sproles has stood up. But that goes back to the defense of Iowa State, led by Ward, that they have to be so disciplined on that play action. And they've got to be what, what coaches like to call gap sound on the run. Yeah, what John Spladaney, the defense coordinator, says we have to have our fits, meaning we fit into the right spots on defense. If a guy rolls away from you, don't automatically chase him. Stay backside because the play could come back towards you on a cutback or a counter play. Fit into the right flow, and then you can make a play. Roberson, the quarterback draw, ball is loose, picked up, fumble, recovered by Travis Wilson. Johnny on the spot, the fullback out of Howell, Michigan. Woo, that could have been real dangerous. And that's unfortunate for Iowa State's defense because this is a great tackle. Matt Word, number seven. Excellent, excellent tackle. Helmet and shoulder pads right, right through the ball. See him right on the arms, ball comes free. Iowa State has a chance to get it. They don't. Travis Wilson keeps the drive alive for Kansas State. And Matt Ward's brother, Mark, plays to the Browns. on the keeper. They only needed about a yard and a half. That should be good enough for a first down. You're 450. You're Dan McCartney on the other side of the field. You've already given up over 200 yards on offense. Now it's up to about 220. You've got to be concerned in this last 450. You don't let them put anything else on the board. Yeah, and you have to find a way for your defense to get off the field. This is a team that on defense has played a lot of plays in the mm -hmm. last few weeks. When you think about what happened at Oklahoma, when the offense couldn't move the ball so the defense was on the field the whole ball game. It's a lot of plays to play, and they don't have very much depth. Roberson on a play action pass complete to Taco Wallace, but he pays for it. His on Boston. The senior out of Tarpon Springs, Florida, comes up with a big hit. He's probably the most unheralded player on this defense, and he remembers three years ago when they had the big lead at halftime, only to lose in that football game. He says he's tired of that. Yeah, and he, came, he was playing in the short zone, like a cover two, meaning that those corners were playing what they call squat coverage or hard corners, mm -hmm. not really retreating into the secondary unless someone pushes them, able to come up and deliver the big hit. Second and seven. Overson sets up the screen and it's incomplete. He was
was looking for James Terry. So many teams are running that play now, Charles. You know that? Yeah, and, and it's a very effective play, and it had a chance again to break big because you're getting people trying to put pressure on you. James Terry's going to dive into the middle here and catch the ball, and look at the blocking out front. See that? Had four guys down in front of him, but that's been the, pro the wrap on James Terry this season. The one thing is he's not catching the ball as well as he needs to. Does that play have a chance to break big with four lead blockers getting downfield? As long as you throw the ball behind the line of scrimmage, your blockers can release early and get downfield and make their blocks. One of four tonight for Kansas State on third down. They need seven. Over to the rifles, the pass, and it's complete to Thomas Hill. He had a little mustard on that football. Here's Aaron Andrews. All right, Ron, well, you and Charles spoke earlier about how confident L. Roberson is. You'll never guess where he learned that from. His grandmother, Ernestine, she, Roberson claims she is the driving force in his life, the main woman in his life, so much when his grandmother dropped him off at school, she told his quarterbacks, Coach Hudson, if you have any problems with him, you let me know. <laughs> and you know, when we talked about it uh, with uh, L yesterday about this, we mentioned her name. He goes, oh, you don't oh, mess yeah, with yeah, her. Yeah, 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 it was, yeah, yeah. You didn't call her, did you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma's got to be happy right now. Straight up the middle. Scrolls looking for Peter. Touchdown. <laughs> Blocking up front, excellent job. Just caved everyone from, to, to one side on the offensive line. That's what they call zone blocking. Just step one way, find someone in front of you and block them. Let the running back find the hole. Darren Sproles down the hole, opposite of the direction of the blocking. And with his speed and shiftiness and power, he's in the end zone for another touchdown. Go in for the extra point. They had to bobble the snap. They got it down, and the kick is good. <laughs> Sproles with a touchdown, his 11th rushing touchdown of the year. TBS Big Play Saturday brought to you by T-Mobile. With T-Mobile, you get more from life. Get more minutes, more features, more service. And by the Home Depot, driving down the cost of home improvement. Now we've got a Kansas State player down on the field after the extra point on the five-yard line. Tough to see. I think it's Steve Washington mm -hmm. who's starting center. And 315 pounds of him. He's battled injuries all year, but he stayed in and been tough playing. You see Bill Snyder, remember I talked earlier? See, there's Bill Snyder, the head coach going out to check on his player. I love that. I've got to tell you, I love it for this simple reason. When these young men go to these schools, the head coach is often seen as the father figure and the guy that, you know, the, the parents are entrusting their kid to him. And when you go out and show concern, I love that. That's right. I, 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 you know, it, it's not showboating. It's these guys, guys are working hard for you every day. Make sure that they're okay. And, and you know what? We talked to, to Bill about that yesterday. And Coach Snyder and I said, what was the most gratifying part? And he says, you know, when the guys come back, the Jonathan Beasleys, the Michael Bishops, you know, the Aaron Lockets, and they come back and, hey, Coach, thanks. You exactly. know, and he, he said, that is the most gratifying part of, of coaching football. And those are the names many fans recognize, but they don't realize are how many of the guys who just played third string and never played a down come back how much these guys have meant to their lives. Lance Young gets up to the 20-yard line, and Iowa State will have 3.08 left in the half to work with. Well, tonight's pre-play is created with the NCAA Football 2003 from EA Sports. It's in the game, and here's next week's pre-play with Arizona State and USC. Arizona State quarterback Andrew Walter finds Darrell Lightfoot, and Arizona State leads by a touchdown. Moving ahead to the third quarter, Sonny Bird of USC takes it in from eight. Trojans lead. But in the fourth, it's Walter again, and Justin Taplin, and the Sun Devils pull out the win. Log on to easports.com. Guess your vote on the outcome of next week's game, and be sure to join us at 7 o'clock Eastern to find out the real outcome. EA Sports, it's in the game. Okay, put on your coaching cap there, Chris.
Coach Davis, Dan McCartney right now get to beat at the point of attack, obviously, uh, on uh, his defensive line, but he still has 308 to work. And by the way, we did have a penalty on that uh, kickoff. A little block in the back, so they pushed it back even farther. Yeah, and they have, they have to go 90 yards now because of that. 308, they have all three timeouts. Remember, the timeout they called was wiped away because there was a penalty first. The key now, no turnovers deep mm -hmm. in their own territory. It's one of those things you have to play it safe, but you don't want to play it safe. Right. Michael Wagner, nothing doing. Kansas State, you can feel them right now smelling. Listen, we can put these guys in a big hole. Iowa State's possessions, you can see the first two weren't all that great. A punt and a fumble as Kansas State took a 13-0 lead. Looked like they were going to get it going when they had. Look at that right there. There it is. It started midfield. Got the touchdown. Everything else, Zippo. Nothing. Own 20, own 20, own 7. Field position. Now look at that. Iowa State, average field position start. They're own 22. Kansas State, they're own 39. That's big. Kansas State showing blitz. They bring five. Wallace gets rid of it quickly. Patrick's complete to Danielson with some running room. Over the 40, up to the 43-yard line. That's his sixth catch already tonight. Well, we like to check out our instant poll results. Who win the Big 12 North this year? Well, I'll tell you, it's pretty even. 36% say Gary Barnett's Colorado Buffaloes, Iowa State, and Kansas State at 32. Kansas State needs some help, as we mentioned at the top of the show. Iowa State, they can handle it themselves. Iowa State, Seneca Wallace. A little bounce pass. How come we haven't seen Seneca Wallace, Seneca Wallace, Wallace running the ball a little Banks, bit more, Percy, maybe to kind of loosen up that defense? I have to admit, that's a little bit of a surprise Randy to me. I thought that earlier in the game he might pull it down and dart through the, through the gaps because Kansas State was coming at him pretty hard. But remember, he likes being a pocket passer. You know, you see Steve Bricky again, the offensive coordinator of Iowa State. They love him having his hands on the ball, and that's Terry Allen next to him. The former head coach at Kansas is now assistant head coach at Iowa State. Two great minds in the booth. Oh, yeah. But they've got to find a way for Seneca to be unleashed. Wallace well, scrambling. Penalty flag is thrown as the pass is complete to Lane Danielson and his seventh reception if it holds up. Number 82, Lane Danielson. I think they caught Kansas State holding in the secondary. Now well, the field judge is Greg Burks. Talking to referee Cooper Castleberry. This is a good officiating crew of the Big 12. Wow. Oh, my. Offensive interference. You see that on pick plays or other varieties, but, but sometimes you just get a push off on, on trying to get open as a receiver. The former defensive back, who am I to jump out there and say those guys <laughs> had a penalty first? That's right. Watch right at the 50 here. I think we'll be able to see it. Let's huh? take you get the two receivers the here. On the offense. Right there. From the previous See it? Spot. That's a pick. <laughs> That's a pick. One receiver blocking all the way downfield, allowing the other receiver to run his route. What you're supposed to do is just swipe him. You yeah. know, you just kind of swipe him as you go by. Kind of just little, get in the way. Just give him a little bow. <laughs> There's a story, too. How about almost double the season average for penalties? And so many of those penalties occurred early when they were extremely tight. Mm -hmm going into the ball game, and now they continue to self-destruct as they try and get back into it. Second and 25 for the Cyclones. Oh, my. In double digits. They had time on the play clock, so maybe another legal procedure. There was some moving around on the line again. Prior to the snap, a full start on the offense. Five yards, two second down. Well, fans, do you have a question for us? All you have to do is send us an email. We'll select one question to answer later in the game. And the question, uh, send it to tbsbigplay at aol.com. And by the way, please include your name and where you are from. You know, I'm wondering which halftime speech Dan McCartney <laughs> gives right now. Because we've heard about the different ones. You know, earlier this year, Florida State, he told him, hey, I believe in you can come back. They made the big comeback almost one. Iowa, they were down big. He said, the heck with that. And he pitched a fit, and they responded in one. You know, at Oklahoma, he told him how much he loved them when they were down big. Which speech does he give tonight? <laughs> to I try think, and get I, them back I, in I it. I think it's the clipboard broken one. <laughs> Seneca Wallace on second and 30. Has some time. Throws over the middle. Almost picked off off the hands of Lance Young, the junior out of St. Louis, Missouri. 
Don't forget, though, against Florida State, Dan McCartney's squad was in a big hole. Come back, they had a chance to win it, only losing it 38-31. Controversial call at the end. Of course, they trailed Iowa 24-7 at the half. But here's that play against Florida State. Watch Seneca Walls. This is close. Yeah, is it, one, is he inbounds, and two, does the ball cross the plane? I think the ball crossed the plane. I think so, too. The officials determined that he was, it, he was out of bounds with his foot right on the sideline, and then on the next play, they were stuck, and Florida State escaped. Well, they're going to need Seneca Walls if they want to come back. Intercepted Kansas State. Brian Hickman with a pick. His third of the year. And he's on a roll two against Oklahoma State. You know, you just talked about it, Charles, at about the three-minute mark. You can't have a turnover on this drive, and that's what happens. And this is a great job by Brian Hickman, the linebacker, dropping underneath against Lane Danielson, number 82. They always talk about can a linebacker cover a receiver. They can underneath the lock. All three of these guys are from Texas. Brian Hickman and Josh Buell were played together at Mesquite High School in Texas. And Terry Pierce is the third Texas, and not only that, they're roommates. <laughs> uh, and, and they're coming together as a, as a unit, those three linebackers. Now let's check in with Aaron Andrews. All right, well, you just talked about the three nasty Texans. Now, that's their media name, the linebacker trio of Josh Buell, Brian Hickman, and Terry Pierce. You spoke about how they live together. Guys, what a sight their apartment must be. They have three big linebackers living there, but they also have a pit bull and a Rottweiler guarding their door. Now, they said, yeah, they like that three nasty Texans nickname, but they also like to call themselves, like you said, the Texas trio and the knockout kings. Bill Snyder says he likes the fact that they live together because you can look, you can tell their chemistry out there on that field. All right, now that chemistry has L. Roberson throwing deep down the middle, and the pass is going to be incomplete. A couple of movement on that uh, line of uh, Kansas State. Nick Lecky has now moved over to center to Steve Washington as Washington came up with that uh, injury just a while back. Just a reminder to stick around for the Chili's halftime reporter, and he'll be at the big game house catching you up on all of today's action. How about that Ohio State game? Fourth down and one. Jim Tressel calls for a pass. Touchdown. They win the ball game. Those are the kind of calls that make coaches legendary. Oh, yeah. Got you know calls. what I'm saying? If he has that type of a career, people will talk, to, talk about calls such as that. Roberson buys some time, rifles the pass, and complete short hop to Taco Wallace. <laughs> you know, Aaron's, Aaron's report about the, the, the three nasty Texans, those three guys, she mentioned the, the pit bull and the Rottweiler. Yeah. As mean as those guys are, who needs a pit bull and a Rottweiler so say, running around in a Who's going to come in place with those three? I mean, I mean, and Hickman came into the season wanting to not be the weak link, picking up for Ben Lieber, who's now starting for the San Diego Chargers, and he's having a heck of a year. No weak links on those three linebackers. They want to be known as possibly the best linebacking trio ever at K-State, mm -hmm. which is tough to do when you think about Jeff Kelly. There have been <laughs> Mark some players Simino. here. That's right, been some players. You know? So there have been some good ones. Well, Iowa State forcing Kansas State to punt. Bad snap. Brown tries to get it away, and it's blocked. And right at midfield, Iowa State will take over, and Travis Brown is down. He's trying to hop up. This young man has had no luck. No, Travis he hasn't. Brown. A couple of years ago, everything was going wrong for him. Five punts blocked. Yeah, this year he's been punting oh so well. And this one, this one gets off to a bad start because you see as the ball hits the ground, why? The snap actually hit Terry Pierce, number 56, the mm -hmm. personal protector. And then when Travis Brown tries to kick it, he jams his foot into the turf before he can kick the ball. Watch where the ball, watch where the ball hits. It's going to hit the personal protector here, I believe, on the snap. Yeah, it does. Excuse me. So that's, you know, that's Terry Pierce, their starting middle linebacker, one of the three nasty Texans. Then Brown stubs his foot, trying into the ground, and then into his own guy. Well, Seneca Wallace has 12 seconds to work with. Trying to buy some time. Still looking. Sees a little opening. Tiptoes down the sideline and scampers out with four seconds left in the half. Smart play by Seneca because he realized there wasn't much time on the clock rather than trying to make mm -hmm. a highlight film run and letting the clock run out with the chances not with your chances not being good of making it all the way to the end zone. Gets out of bounds, gives them one more chance to throw it into the end zone, hope they can get a big play right before the half. 
And Iowa State still hasn't run any trick plays. Probably not the time right now. Now there's no, for third quarter. There's no trickery involved. With, no. You know when you're down 30 to seven because the defense plays a little bit looser. Three wide receivers to the left. Final play of the opening half. Kansas State brings five. Lots of pressure. Wallace trying to get away. Throws across his body. and He'll fall incomplete. Melvin Williams was putting the pressure on Wallace, but an excellent 30 minutes for the Kansas State Wildcats. Not so for Seneca Wallace in the Iowa State Cyclones. Only 146 yards offense for Iowa State in that first 30 minutes. 248 for Kansas State. Here's Craig Sager. Well, Coach, Seneca Wallace presents a lot of problems. Where are the keys to keeping him intact? Well, you just play hard and get good pass rush on him and try to keep him contained so he can't get to sprint out pass against you. Well, anytime there's pressure, there are risks, but so far the K-State defense has been rewarded, living up to their reputation in national ranking. It's 30 to 7 at intermission. Let's go to the big game house and Ernie Johnson. The big play Saturday presented by Best Buy and T-Mobile. As we get to start the third quarter, Iowa State trailing by a bundle against Kansas State. Dan McCarty's never beaten Kansas State, and Bill Snyder's only lost to Iowa State once in his career. Oh, Charles Davis, I'm Ron Thule, and you take a look at the numbers at your Dan McCartney. You see field position, number one. You see penalties, number two. But I think more importantly, you see that you're being beaten at the point of attack on both sides of the football. Again, their biggest fear, and it is being, it is being evidenced by the field position also. They're starting at their, they're averaging at their own 25, starting their possessions, talking about Iowa State, while Kansas State starting at their own 42. Mm -hmm. The one time Iowa State had field position at midfield, they went downfield and scored a touchdown. The rest of the game has been played on their end of the field, and that's been a big problem for the Iowa State Cyclones and Dan McCartney. Well, the good news is there's still plenty of football left to be played. No wonder they call it Superstation. I like it. That'll work. <laughs> well, Iowa State will kick it away as we get the second half underway. Let's send it down to Craig Sager. Craig? Well, you guys mentioned earlier that the players rank Dan McCartney's halftime speeches. Let me put it this way. This one was anything but positive. He told the team you have to take responsibility for winning and losing. Right now, you're not giving yourself a chance to win. We're the least penalized team in the Big 12 for a reason. You're going out there making too many mistakes against an outstanding football team. He said, we have to get back to basics and fight. The team then responded to him by yelling, we'll be back, we'll be back. And that's what they're going to try to do with the time left. I wonder what the over and under was on clipboards, those eggs. You know, <laughs> wouldn't you like to, wouldn't you like yeah. to have that that concession? <laughs> well, Dan is he's such a passionate man, and, and we, we've gotten to know him over the last uh, few years while he's been coach at uh, Iowa Five State. Down, yeah. Loves his players. The offense. Five yards. Still first down. Loves his kids, and he and he's quite a competitor off the field. Though he is, he's probably one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet in your life. Just a solid football coach who's who's built this program up the correct way. And, and that penalty against Kansas State was what we saw from Iowa State in the whole mm -hmm. first half. As soon as they'd start a, 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 a series, they would have a penalty that would move them back. But I think that what Dan McCartney told his team in terms of taking responsibility, is this time for us to beat someone that is supposed to be so-called better than us? That's right. You know, Nebraska was a big start towards it. We have to continue to do that. Better attack by that Iowa State defense quickly, you see it, and Matt Ward leading the charge. And once again, you rely on your seniors to step up and show a little leadership, and that's what Matt just did. And what I like about this play is that it's an option coming down the line, and this time, Someone has responsibility for the quarterback. Matt Word, the inside linebacker, scrapes from the inside. What they call inside-out position so that there's no cutback by L. Roberson back across his face. Takes it all the way towards the sideline. Makes a short tackle. Excellent defense. Now you see what L. Roberson has done. Solid evening, 8 of 12 for 126 yards. Foles, 57 yards. And Taco Wallace, 44 yards on five receptions. Second down and 17, and they're going to have to burn a timeout. And boy, that just, just absolutely chaps the coach. Now Bill Snyder's going to have to talk about it with L. Roberson, but he does lead by 23.
30 to 7 is our score. Number 12, Kansas State over Iowa State. And our first and 10 line is brought to you by Home Depot. Although we're only 50 seconds into the third quarter, I think it is obvious that Iowa State's come out with a little more emotion and aggressiveness. And it seems to be harnessed. They had emotion yeah. and aggressiveness early, but it resulted in a lot of penalties. Now they have to make tackles. And they didn't make tackles there. The ball is loose. Kansas State, saying that Kansas State still has it. Matt Ward can't three. believe it. Darren Sproles, in any type of open field situation, you can almost bet your last dollar, your shirt, whatever, but he's going to make the first guy miss. Now let's see what happens after that. There's a missed tackle. All right, Mark Timmons, the safety. Nice tackle on the opposite Whoa, side. Oh, that ball was coming by out. Ellis Hobbs. Five, and the ball five, was five. coming out. Kansas State fortunate there. But they called him down. Mm -mm -mm. Nice tackle, too, by the corner on the opposite side. That's the kind of tackle you have to make against Darren Spurs. Third down and nine. Roberson dodges one. Looking, throwing, wide open. First down, Kansas State at the 40-yard line. It scrolls. We have a penalty flag on the other side of the field. Iowa State's pointing at Kansas State. And it is against K-State. An eligible receiver. Happens occasionally when a quarterback scrambles. Oftentimes, it's a lineman getting downfield. Another nice play negated mm -hmm. by penalty. 15 yards on that completion, and they're going to bring it back. An eligible player downfield on the offense. Five yards from the previous spot. Replay third down. You know, we have to also say this Kansas State offense, even though we're this far into the season, they had to spend a great deal of time at the beginning of the year finding itself. You started with Mark Dunn, the starting quarterback, L. Roberson coming in at the USC game, but they weren't on the field all that much in the beginning of the season because of great defense, obviously. The, the defense was dominating and scoring. See? Yeah. So, so they were taking repetitions away from the offense early when they were rolling up big numbers, you know, against one double A teams. Mm -hmm. And they didn't get a chance to run very many plays early. So they're still coming along. They're work in progress. Here comes the blitz by Iowa State. Kansas State picks it up. Roberson's pass complete for a first down up to the 31 yard line of James Terry. <laughs> Solid work by Roberson, who's got a little hitch now. He's also limping. Yeah, I think he took a hit on the back side, but he hung in there and delivered a strike. Watch from the back side. Jeremy Lloyd, number 41, pushed outside by Nick Leckie in there, right on the back of the legs. Jermaine Billups, number six. But this is a catch that James Terry needed for his confidence. Remember in the early part of the early in the first half when he dropped the jailbreak screen? Mm -hmm. <laughs> First and ten, Sproles the left side, gets up to the 40-yard line to pick up a four out of the play. You know, just when Iowa State thinks they're doing something good defensively, they give up the play and pass the third. Third and ten. Mm -hmm. You know, this is exactly which the situation you want them in as we take a look at John Skladany, the defensive coordinator. When you ask him, what do you want from your defense, he said second and long, third and long. Third and ten certainly qualifies. Now you have to make the play and shut them down. They weren't able to do that in the last possession. Iowa State showing like they're going to blitz, moving around on the line. Safety's moving up. Here they come. Roberson pumps, looking as a man incomplete at the 34-yard line. No penalty flag. Derek Evans, the intended receiver, the junior out of Denver, Colorado. Strike two. Credit big time to the offensive line as we take a look from our All-State camera on the goalpost. It's a curl route, deep curl. Watch this. Yeah, I'd say I'd say they have something to beef about because to me, a T. Boston is already there. Yeah. See that? He's already wrapped around him, <laughs> hugging him, letting him know he's there. Well, we want to thank All-State for providing tonight's goalpost cam. You're in good hands with All-State. What a great view we had from That's the goalpost cam, huh? I mean, perfect. But how about L. Roberson's strike on that pass? We had a little velocity on that. We've got a timeout by Iowa State. They trail by a bunch.
This week's installment of Home Depot Building a Team features the turnaround these two programs have made recently. And look at these numbers. How about Iowa State during the 90s? What they've done the last three years? Incredible. But how about Kansas State? 114 wins, 47 years before Bill. They got 112 now. <laughs> that tells you something. Boy, resurrection of two programs by two terrific coaches. And on third down, L. Roberson is going to be dropped. That's the first sack of the evening for this Iowa State defense. That's only the 14th sack allowed by the Kansas State offensive line. Good, solid rush. Yeah, I was getting ready to praise Kansas State. And Jeremy Lloyd, number 41, beats Thomas Hill, number 88. Off to your left side to force the, force the sack. Excuse me, not force the sack, to make the sack. And I was just getting ready to praise Kansas State's offensive line for their pass protection in the second half. They let one get by. Well, Rick Gerland <laughs> now kicking because Travis Brown must have been injured. He gets a nice kick out of way back to the 20-yard line. Still on his feet is Miller. He's not going anywhere. 45 yards on a kick by Rick Gerland. That's only his second punt of the year. The senior out of Louise, Texas, out of Lynn Junior College, and somebody blew a tire. Got to be the shoes, money. Got to be, the, be shoes. the shoes. Come back and get the old kicks here. Huh? <laughs> Got to have them. Hey, socks are going to be all wet. Here's Gurla. Whoa. Whoa. Got a little overextended on the plant leg there. That could pull a hammy. Yes. What a great tackle downfield by Josh Buell, number seven, the starting linebacker, making a big play on special teams. Well, Iowa State did what they wanted to do out of halftime. Kansas State with eight in the box. Wallace passes complete to Lane Danielson. Some running room as he gets up to the 40. Seven catches for Lane Danielson in this ball game. Over 100 yards. Second consecutive game. He's been over 100. Blitz by Kansas State. Lane Danielson makes himself available. Seneca Wallace delivers. If there's one good thing that Kansas State did on that play, though, is they forced the play inside because they have excellent backside pursuit. Mm -hmm. Josh Buell running from the backside made the tackle. If Danielson gets to the sidelines, that's more trouble for the defense. His fourth 100-yard game receiving. Seneca Wallace, little play action. Looking, throwing, picked off. Bobby Walker's got some running room. Bobby Walker, touchdown, Kansas State. Wait a minute. Iowa State saying he fumbled before he got in the end zone. He was bobbling it. Maybe a touchback. Maybe a touchback. He didn't know they determined he's in. Derek Newman doesn't like the call. Or he likes the call. Bobby Walker is fourth interception. Second run back for a touchdown. Watch, it's a bootleg pass. All right, he's trying to find Jack Whitford right there, number 26. Excellent job by Bobby Walker, staying at home and reading. Now, as he goes into the end zone, the ball's coming free, and it goes over the goal line, and then out of the back of the end zone. Ooh. My understanding of this rule, <laughs> and again, I haven't been too great tonight, have I? Should be a touchback for Iowa State. Well, Tim Millis, the head of Big 12 officials, is downstairs. Well, the extra point wasn't pretty, but it's good after the 45-yard return of the interception by Bobby Walker. Here's the end of that play. Is see, the he ball has, out? See, oh, ball's yeah. out. Ball's out well before the goal line, and no one has control as it goes out the back of the end zone. The last person to have control is Bobby Walker. See, the goal line's here. Ball's out well before the goal line. Mm. So the ball should have been. Here's how the play should have read. Intercepted pass. Great return by Bobby Walker. He gets all the yardage for that. And there's Steve Br Bricky, the offensive coordinator. He's had better nights. Okay, Terry Allen also looking on over here, the former head coach at Kansas. But, the, you know, the, the yardage should go on Walker's record. The interception right. should go on his record. A fumble should go on his record. And Iowa State shot the ball first to 10 and the 20. That tells it all. They've been so good at protecting the Plus 11 the all year, minus 3 tonight. And then look at the points. Minus 13 now on the points from plus 48 all season long. Well, Iowa State thought they had a fumble on a Darren Sproles run. It looked like it was a fumble. That one was a fumble. They just didn't get the benefit of two calls on that drive. No. Mm, that's that's, that's going to have to be looked at on Monday. Yeah, and that's not going to be, unfortunately, for the officials who work so hard and hustle so hard each and every game, they're not going to enjoy watching that. 
Well, let's see what Iowa State has in them now. Oh, my. That's going to leave a mark. Lance Young taking a big shot. Jared Johnson, a backup linebacker, lowering the boom on Lance Young, and he's going to feel that in the world pool tomorrow. Going back to the points off the turnovers. Now, as we look at the big hit, <laughs> it's one of those introductory hits, Ooh. isn't it? Hello. <laughs> Lance Johnson, let me introduce myself to you, Lance Young. But, you know, going back to last week, Iowa State coaches felt but as if they lost 14 points right. based on based on some calls that went against them against Missouri, forcing the scramble to win it late. Seven I'll agree with. The other one I wouldn't. Yeah. Wallace rolling out. Up. Looking for some running room. Picks up three as he heads out of bounds, chased by Brian Hickman. But if you're an Iowa State fan now, you have to, you're going to say to yourself, okay, what is left of this team? Because you look at the scoreboard, 37 to 7, a lot of teams will start closing up the suitcase. Let's hit the charter. But I don't think you're going to see this from this Iowa State team. Not, it's not in the personality of their coaching staff. Not in the personality of the coaching staff, really not in the personality of the team. We chronicled that earlier today. Although that fan looks as if uh, <laughs> he may be ready for an early night, but did never fear. This team has a lot of a lot of fight left in them, and they always seem to make some type of a comeback. Remember we saw that the Florida State game, mm -hmm. Iowa earlier this year, and another pickoff by Bobby Walker, and another touchdown by Bobby Walker. because he's not the acknowledged leader of your team or the guy you think is the best player. You just take him out because you think to yourself, we still have two games left to play. Mm -hmm. To position ourselves better for bowl games, you want to make sure you have that guy feeling good about himself when you do so. What a night go for Bobby Walker. Two interceptions, two touchdowns. The extra point is good. Tell us what happened, Charles. Well, short zone now. Three-step drop, trying to throw the, the slant pattern. Bobby Walker sits in the short zone, and this time he leaves no doubt that he's in the end zone. Kansas State, a huge. Big Play Saturday is presented by T-Mobile and Best Buy. And we welcome you back to KSU Stadium in Manhattan, Kansas, where number 12, Kansas State, taking care of Iowa State. Along with Charles Davis, Craig Sager, and Aaron Andrews, I'm Ron Thulin. And I'll tell you, it's been a good five minutes if you're a Kansas State fan. 14 points on a couple of interceptions. Smart play. John Miller takes a seat. Now, Kansas State has won 60 of their last 62 games when they scored first. They scored first tonight, and they may score last. They are really putting it on. The only thing you forgot was often. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> first, last, and often tonight. Well, Seneca Wallace looks like he's going to come out and try to take control. Craig Sager, what do you got? Well, you mentioned earlier that you thought possibly it would be a time to take Seneca Wallace out of the ball game, maybe to get his confidence up. They're discussing it on the sideline. A couple of the other coaches said, we don't want him to end on a note like that. We want him to come back and gain his confidence. Ooh. There is definitely a question about whether or not his confidence is shattered. Yeah. Great point, Greg. They keep it on the ground, straight ahead running. And you know, we got to say something about Seneca Wallace, too, because uh, after the debacle at Oklahoma and, and, you know, his national TV and he was embarrassed, to his credit and Dan McCarty's credit, Seneca Wallace faced the media. He answered the questions himself. And he stood up to it. He said, listen, I didn't play well. He didn't put the blame on anybody else. We talked to him about it yesterday. This is a stand-up young man. And he will do it again tonight because that's the way that he is built. And I understand what the coaches are saying about we don't want him to end on a bad note. The tough part is you're not sure that you can actually guarantee that, <laughs> you right. know? So I give them credit for trying, 
But right now, the Kansas State defense is dictating every piece of action that's going on the field. Well, fans, for exclusive news and recruiting coverage of your favorite teams, log on now to Rivals.com. Oh, those two interceptions, excuse me, those two interceptions, by the way, four touchdowns. That is a Kansas State record, as one might imagine. And that's his third of the year return yeah, for a touchdown, which ties another Kansas State record. So Bobby Walker having a heck of a year, despite having missed a couple of games due to injury. He's back, and I don't think that knee hurt in the first half. Feels too bad now, does yeah, it? the pride of Tyler Texas. Seneca's pass is complete up over the 30-yard line. Let's see where they spot it. And we have a penalty flag thrown late. And I bet it goes against Iowa State as one of those penalties that will drive coaches crazy. You're already down 44 to 7. You're trying to get something going. Hiawatha Rutland, number 12 in the game, a late hit, throwing a block well after the play's over. It is a personal foul against the Cyclones. They shot themselves in the foot so many times, you got to count their toes. Watch, 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 watch coming in. And now Josh Buell got away, it looks about, oh, with a yeah. little face mask. He got away with that. But coming into the picture late, there he is, High Rutland. Coming in, see him accelerating there and launching the block? Trust me on this. He hit someone, knocked him After down. The play, a personal foul on the offense. 15 yards, first down. You know, coaches, even when you're getting blown out, you don't want your team to lose their composure, and Hiawatha is going to hear it right now from Dan McCartney. Because there's a way to play the game, to be disciplined throughout. That's that's part of the maturity also. Even when you're down, you're still going to play what coaches say. Pick your squad, right? Iowa State football. That's not playing good Iowa State football. There's Tony Alford, a great coach, a running backs coach, talking to Hiawatha. I'm just saying, I know, I know, but you were wrong. And, and unfortunately for him, it won't be negated in film, even when they see the face mask on Josh Buell. A couple of times. Going <laughs> deep, pass is incomplete. Well, our next telecast will be next Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern time, right here on TBS. 25th ranked Arizona State will take on USC, currently ranked number 10. USC in a good battle today, and Arizona State also battling, and we'll give you the update on those scores as we move along. And of course, Roadhouse, starring Patrick Swayze, I believe. And you can see with Carson Palmer, I tell you, you know, we, we had him early in the year. We said Carson Palmer should be in this Heisman race. Those numbers say he should be in the Heisman race. Yes, without a doubt. And Andrew Walter did not start the year as the start as the number one quarterback at Arizona State, but he sees that position. Now here's the option. Pitching it back to Hiawatha Rutland, who got out of the doghouse quickly. Brian Hickman pushes him out of bounds. Pushed out of bounds by number 18, Brian Hickman. Well, I think the coaches realize that High Rutland hasn't played in the last couple of games. Wants to make a play for his team. He made a bad play. He heard mm -hmm. about it. Fine. Now let's get him back on the field and get him back into some game shape. We've got two games left after this, and we're going to need the big fella. You know? That's right. <laughs> you don't just bench him now for, for one bad play. Got to get him back out there and get, get knock a little bit of the rust off of him. Well, Iowa State only one of seven on third down. This is third and five. Kansas State brings only four. Penalty flag is thrown. Might be a free play. Ball is tipped. Looked like Justin Montgomery, the big nose tackle out of Smith Center, Kansas. Got the paw on it. Boy, he's a big one. <laughs> and it is a free play. Now, was it a true five yards? Let's see the numbers on Justin. 6'2", 281, looks a lot bigger than 281. He does, doesn't he? I would have thought with, with, that, with the way he's built with all that on him, about 300 pounds. And that will be a first down. Offside, Offside on, the on the defense, five yards, first down. This is exactly what the Iowa State coaches are seeking for Seneca Wallace right mm -hmm. now, something positive. That's right. <laughs> you know, as they said, they don't want to retire him on, on a negative note. Again, nothing's guaranteed, but this is what more, more, what the, more of what they are looking for out of him in the offense right now. Well, he's never gotten in sync tonight. Credit some of that to Kansas State's defense. They've done a whale of a job to keep it on the ground, right side with Hiawatha Rutland, Terry Hiawatha, Hiawatha, Pierce, who was a human wrecking ball in that USC game a couple of weeks ago. He comes up with a stop. He's doing his impersonation of that again tonight. Mm -hmm. 
important, though, is for a, a quarterback like Seneca Wallace, who can beat you with his arm and his leg to get into a type of rhythm. We saw OU, Oklahoma, took him out of that rhythm, and Kansas State doing likewise tonight. It's, it's huge, and it's not just him. It's any quarterback. They all have to have the rhythm and the feel where everything is working well for them from the time the play comes in until the time the play is completed. He hasn't had that tonight. It's not all his fault. No one's really been in sync on offense for Iowa State. This time rolling left. Has an opening to run and takes it. Scampers over the 35, the runs out of bounds at about the 38-yard line. Again, it's Hickman on the chase. Well, let's take a look at this week's Jack Daniels original hard cola flashback. USC at K-State back on September 23rd. James Terry's nine-yard pass from Miller Roberson, then Sultan McCullough, the 25-yard run. Kansas State's lead was trimmed to seven. And then fourth down, Carson Palmer trying to tie the game up, throws the incomplete pass, and Kansas State wins it 27 to 20. That was a good ball game. It was an excellent game. The last pass was a miscommunication between quarterback and receiver. And as we learned later, mm -hmm. the receiver ran the wrong route on the play. Otherwise, we might have had a chance at going into OT. That was an, ex that was an excellent ball game. USC laying it down on Stanford today, thus far as it did this evening. So we get a chance to see the Trojans next week. And there's an update on the score in the fourth quarter. Stanford very struggling big time this year, and USC getting stronger as the season goes on. And look at Arizona State. They were down to California last I had seen, 28-24, and they're now back in the lead by one. Another good ball game. Good job, though, Jeff Tedford. Oh, Jeff Tedford, Dirk Cutter, the head coach at Arizona State. Both of those guys did oh, yeah. a great job with programs picked to be in the bottom division of the Pac-10 this year. That was good enough for a first down, so Iowa State trying to get something going offensively. Not this time. The ball is loose, and Kansas State has it. Josh Buell is the one who came up with it, the junior out of Mesquite, Texas. And the wheels have come off and everything for this Iowa State team. What I've been observing is the defensive ends and outside linebackers are coming off the edge and just following the running backs to the football. And watch the strip as they come and run it. I think it's going to be Hickman, number 18, coming down. Does how he crashes inside. He just followed the running back to the football. And he was there almost at the time that the, quarter, the, the quarterback and running back made the exchange. Knocked the ball free. Another fumble recovered for Kansas State. And who was the last tailback to fumble back in 2000 for Iowa State? That would be Hiawatha Rutland against Baylor in 2000. And he did it again tonight. And that's the first fumble lost by a tailback at Iowa State since that fumble lost by Hiawatha Rutland. That's unbelievable. How many touches does that encompass? It's a whole lot. 2,500 or something? Something like that. It's a whole lot. whole bunch. Great ball security. And tonight, points off the turnovers. The turnovers are bad enough. It's the points that get you every time because you keep putting your defense in an awful stress. Mm -hmm. Typically, turnovers happen on your end of the field. You know, yeah. it makes it a lot easier for them to go short field and score. And when you don't have a lot of depth on defense, and your defense is on the field this long, it's uh, doesn't bode well for you. Pass is complete. Taco Wallace again. He's got six receptions tonight. Well, we got some got some extracurricular here. A lot of frustration going to come oh, out of yeah. this, and I think you hit the nail on the head when you talk about the number of plays that Iowa State has to stay on the field. The offense hasn't sustained very many drives again tonight, so they're on the field a lot. The Oklahoma game, mm -hmm. Iowa State got their first first down in the third quarter. So that tells you yeah. how much the defense is on the field, and they've already been at it 15 weeks this season. That's a lot of plays for a team, as you mentioned, that doesn't have much depth. Right, Dan McCarty's taking the pads off the team on Wednesdays, trying to lighten up the load a little bit. Trying to keep those fresh legs, and it's hard. Iowa State coming up to the line of scrimmage. Stroll fits the gap inside the 10. Keeps the little five, seven legs moving. Gets down to about the seven-yard line. That's a classic case of just catching Iowa State on the move. There's a word that coaches and other football people use about running backs that they like. The word is sudden. Watch how quickly Darren Sproles is through the hole. Great block up front by number 44. His fullback on that one, Travis Wilson, and Sproles deep into the secondary, and as you mentioned, won't go down very easily. Picked up 18 on the play. He only needs seven for the 100-yard mark. Roberson leans forward into the five, down to about the four and a half. Let's take a look at the numbers of the sophomore from Olathe, Kansas, just outside of Kansas City, Darren Sproles. How about five in a row? 
That's against Texas, Oklahoma State. Les Miles got a stout defense, and how about Colorado's defense? That's not against, you know, some terrible team. These are against some pretty good opponents. No, it has been the consistency has been the key. He hasn't fumbled very much. He dropped two against Baylor, trying to make bigger down. plays than maybe what was there. But since that time, he's held on to the ball pretty well, although he got away with one tonight earlier. Well, yeah. <laughs> In those five games, he's averaging six and a half yards a carry. Here he goes again. Left side. Touchdown. Touchdown tonight from the four-yard line. He has 16 carries, 97 yards this evening, and a couple of sixes. While he is strong, a 370-pound bencher, he also doesn't usually give you much to shoot for on the hit. Notice how he was able to turn sideways and no one got a clean shot and then powered his way in. I like him more every time I watch him carry the ball. Forget about the durability question. Extra point is good, and Iowa State's hung a half 101 on Iowa State. Option play coming towards you to your right. Lead option with the 40, with number 44 blocking. Travis Wilson. Notice they never got the clean shot. Three guys had a chance to wrap him up. No one's able to do it. Always turning his body, twisting sideways. You have a back. It gives you the leg. He takes it away. He's a great, great runner. And what's, get, what's even more impressive about him is we see Seneca Wallace on the sidelines with Iowa State. I think they're contemplating, do we put him back in or don't we at this stage? Yeah. You know, the, the numbers obviously aren't very good. But to finish my point on Darren Sproles, you know, he also now is big in the pass game, meaning he stays on the field all right. the time. Pass blocks. We saw him catch a ball earlier tonight that was brought back because of a penalty. But he's now an integral part, total, right. totally immersed in the offense of Kansas State. Now well, Seneca's also thrown three interceptions. He's not he put his helmet back on. He he wants to come back in. No, he's, he has no quit in him. No. Uh, he, and, and as the team leader, he doesn't want to ask out of a ball game. You'll never see that happen to Seneca Wallace. And Kansas State sets to kick it away. 5-0-1 still to play here in quarter number three. It has been an offensive explosion by the Wildcats. 21 points here in the third. Now Michael Wagner is just going to let it go, and Iowa State will take over. First and 10 from their own 20. TBS Big Play Saturday brought to you by Discover Card. It pays to discover. And by Wrangler and Wrangler's new five-star premium denim jeans. Real, comfortable jeans. And along with Craig Sager, Aaron Andrews, Charles Davis, I'm Ron Thulin, along with Darren Sproles. A couple of touchdowns tonight, 97 yards rushing the football. Part of the 21-point outburst here by Kansas State, quarter number three. Jumped up to a 13-0 lead in the first. Iowa State cut it 13-7, but it's been downhill for the Cyclones since then. Penalties, mistakes, and he's beat at the point of attack. Wallace still in. Ryan Thompson is going to be swarmed by a bunch of purple jerseys. They just can't get anything going. Credit that Kansas State defense. I'd remind you in a couple of weeks, we're going to be able to see Quentin Griffin and the formerly number one Oklahoma Sooners taking on Cliff Kingsbury and the Texas Tech Red Raiders as Mike Leach, former offensive coordinator at Oklahoma, goes back to Norman. Try to uh, hang another loss on the Sooners. That'll be uh, at 7 o'clock Eastern Time, November 23rd. And that's why OU is not going to be number one tomorrow. How far will they fall, though? I think they'll settle in about number four. Wallace loses the football again. Kansas State has it again. My goodness. <laughs> Holding like a loaf of bread, though. Yeah, normal, normal what the quarterback does on the scramble from the backside. The ball was stripped out. Justin Montgomery gets, gets the recovery. 
wonder, was that Andrew Scholl, number 98, on the backside mm -hmm. stripping it, who's having one heck of a year at defensive end? You know, there's an old vaudeville story, partner, about paying the two dollars. Right. You know, in other words, there's a fine against you. You know, a guy says, I'll get a lawyer, we'll fight it. Well, it costs more in court costs than to go ahead and pay the two dollars. That's right. I think in this stage for Iowa State, pay the two dollars, cut your losses, get Seneca out for the night. Absolutely. It's not going to get any better. Not, not a question of it now. Kansas State now has a chance to hang even more on the board. Travis Wilson, the fullback on a carry. Now the big 12 standings in the south. Texas at 5-1, Oklahoma 5-1. OU, though, owns the tie break with Texas because of that. Yes. Now, Texas Tech could throw a monkey wrench into that situation, but don't forget, Texas still has Texas hanging them left. So that, this is far from settled in the south, and the same thing in the north. And Texas A&M showed a lot of life today. Mm -hmm. You know, getting a freshman quarterback right. in the game and Reggie McNeil, who played a fine, fine, fine one today. The 12th man job. rallied up. <laughs> I'm happy for R.C. Slocum. He's been under a lot of heat. And, you know, the Tom Tom's are beaten. He's a good football coach. Thomas Hill, he is taken out of bounds. Could be a late hit. No penalty flag. But Coach Slocum has done a great job, and he deserves to stay at a and <laughs> I'm always flabbergasted that there's even a question about it. Oh, I know. It. <laughs> I mean, well, that's, the thing, he's done. that's the thing that I sit there and laugh about. Like, hold it a minute. Yeah. What are you trying to Third tell us three. here? <laughs> <Next> <laughs> what does the man average in terms of wins at this place? That's right. You know, and I know a lot of people, oh, you know, he doesn't win bowl games. Come on. Come on now, hold on a second. Get real. <laughs> Check the record. That's right. Why are we even having this discussion? That's it. Shouldn't, even, <laughs> shouldn't even be brought up. Just ask Dan McCartney and exactly. Bill Snyder. Well, snap clock down to eight. Surprise, Bill Roberson still in the game. Three step drop, blows it on the clock. Pass is complete down to the 11 yard line. Taco Wallace, Ellis Hobbs, the third on the coverage. Seven catches now for Taco Wallace. Here's Aaron Andrews. All right, Ron. Well, you may wonder how L. Roberson feels about all the Seneca Wallace hype. Roberson said, I know he's a good player, but hey, guess what? I'm a good player, too, so it's going to be a battle. He also admitted tonight is a great chance to go up against a Heisman candidate and showcase some of his own abilities. Well, guess what? He did that just tonight without a doubt and Aaron you know one of the things that, that you always have to keep in mind is you know as these court these people who hear about other guys getting a lot of hype yeah. <laughs> that just gets them more hyper <laughs> to that's play right. well against them yep. that's exactly the point you made and I think the coaches wanted to make sure that the, this didn't become a Seneca L Roberson game they didn't want L Roberson to get caught up and take it on this guy no they it, wanted to make sure he stayed within the team concept and credit L Roberson he's done just that and that's easily done by Bill Snyder and his crew because they can easily point out <laughs> yeah. L this is what Seneca has done in terms of consistency game in and game out mm -hmm. this is what he gets done for you your child is more goal. like a graph Here. that's you know kind of up and down with squiggly lines we need to get more straight lines across now Roberson has made strides towards that tonight first man three Travis Wilson touchdown Kansas State <laughs> Wilson, the transfer from Michigan State, his first touchdown this year for Kansas State. That look sums it up, doesn't it? Wow. That's so tough. They saw it against Oklahoma. Let's be honest. Iowa State fans did not expect to have that look on their faces again mm -hmm. this year. They did not expect it to happen as it happened in Norman a few weeks ago. Jared Wright is going to attempt the extra point. He's been part of the carousel of kickers here at Kansas State this year. And he takes advantage of it. Now let's go to the big game house and the cozy big game house with each day. My man. Hey, thank you, Ron. Not to look past the uh, remaining quarter and change that you've got there, but next week it's Arizona State and USC, and tonight Arizona State in a real battle with Cal. Andrew Walter of the Sun Devils to Daryl Lightfoot. Great name for a wide out. Right now it's 38-38 as they head to the fourth. Meantime, USC is cruising past Stanford, too. All right, EJ, of course, we'll have both of those guys coming up next week, 7 o'clock Eastern, right here on Big Play Saturday on TBS as the Wildcat does the push-ups. Did you know 
one of the Wildcats used to be Willie Wildcat at Northwestern, Craig Sager. Let's go down to him now. <laughs> Willie, I'm sorry, Craig. Uh, thank you very much for the endorsement. <laughs> Charles mentioned several possessions ago, three ago, that he probably would have taken Seneca Wallace out of the game. At that point, I said the coaching staff decided to leave him in to hopefully not end on a bad note. Well, now they're faced with another problem. Catch 22, do you take him out, or do you try to get him in there to get some momentum and some rhythm through the entire defensive series? Steve Bricky, the offensive coordinator, quarterback coach, is on the phone with Seneca talking about why he doesn't have any rhythm, why his passes are not accurate, and why he does not seem to be very shifty with his runs. They don't want him to lose his confidence, but yes, they're more disappointed than anybody right now. Huh? Well, it's a, it's a tough situation. Todd Miller getting beat up like a ping pong ball down there. We do have a penalty flag back at the 36-yard line as we go about a minute 12 left in the quarter, but it's kind of a dilemma for a coach, and I think obviously Dan McCartney has the final say-so. Well, what are you doing? Seneca says, I'm going back in. I know exactly what they're, what, what they're thinking of. We have a hanky on the ground. In Iowa State now, I think you can realistically say, okay, the Big 12 North is out of the way. Right. Colorado, Kansas State, two-team battle. Kansas State's definitely going to need help because Colorado beat them head-to-head -head earlier. Right. Iowa State gets Colorado next week. There'll be no bigger fans of Iowa State than Kansas State next That's week right. as they head to Boulder. And don't forget, November 29th in Lincoln, Nebraska. Never an easy place no, to go no, play. No. Texas escaped with their lives just uh, just last weekend but you know something i have to say this obviously i'm not dan mccarney and his staff obviously they know their team better than me i have to say as an outside observer though it's not going to get better it is 58 to 7 right now that's right you're not going to establish a rhythm that you're going to, that's going to carry seneca wallace into colorado next week what you have to rely on is seneca wallace's mental toughness which he has in abundance and his physical skills and gifts and his gift as a leader, his skills as a leader, because he will bounce himself and the team back. I don't think, you know, some drive here is going to make a difference one way or another with him. That's just me. And you don't want to get him hurt. No, I mean, it's overriding I mean, thought. I mean that, that's your bottom line because so they're not going to win the Big 12 South now. They can still play for a bowl game. They may be a little bit better than what they could go to if they lose him and drop more games. Well, the penalty was against Kansas State, so we're redoing the whole thing again. Here's Todd Miller. Gets up to the 29-yard line, a little bit better field position. Well, the problem is it's been something that Iowa State has not done this year. Credit the Kansas State defense. They forced the turnovers. I mean, that, that one there was just, you know, a quarterback trying to take it away from a back, and it hit his hip. And then this one, beautiful interception by Bobby Walker sitting in the short zone, and he does it again. Reads the slant route, takes it in. And now with Brian Hickman chasing the play down backside, and then Seneca holding the ball out. Andrew Schull, excellent job stripping it. Recovered by Justin Montgomery, turned into points again for Kansas State. About five of the last six possessions have resulted in a turnover. Four for four, though, here in the second half. Four possessions, four turnovers. Keeping it on the ground, Brian Thompson. We're not seeing a burst of speed and credit to Kansas State defense for that. This telecast is a copyrighted presentation of Kansas State University, a member of the Big 12 Conference. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent of Kansas State or the Big 12 Conference. I think Iowa State would second the reproducing part. <laughs> I know exactly what Dan McCartney's doing now. He's looking for the guys who continue to play during a tough time. And I think he'll find a lot of guys who have done that. It's just, this just has not been their night. You know, it's just one of those nights where, where no matter what they do and the harder they press, the more penalties they ran into, the more turnovers <laughs> they force themselves into. The old analogy about shooting yourself into in the foot in yep. penalties, they're over 10. So they have no toes left. Well, mercifully, the third quarter is going to come to an end. Quarter points for Kansas State. Great defensive effort, and they have the lead going to the final 15. Let's take a look at our gateway game summary, and you can see that third quarter, though, four for four, four possessions, four turnovers for Iowa State. 
And Kansas State has taken advantage of it. 33 points off the six Iowa State turnovers for the entire game. That's why we are where we are right now. 58 to 7. Fourth and final quarter from Manhattan, Kansas. A homecoming weekend. Kansas State looking for their ninth consecutive win over the Cyclones. Pass up to about the 38-yard line. Complete to Todd Miller. His first reception of the year. For the sophomore out of Mount Pleasant, Iowa. Well, he's shown some toughness on the punt returns. He's taken a couple of licks. Comes up now, gets his first reception, and it's good enough for a first down. And he caught it as a wide receiver. You know, that's not your normal running back route. Checking out of the backfield, catching a swing pass mm -hmm. or a short little, you know, sideline route. That's more of a wide receiver pattern. And that ball arrived with plenty of zip from Seneca Wallace. Now, first and 10 on the 40-yard line. Seneca still in the football game. Danielson in motion. Kansas State with nine in the box. Taking advantage of it. Good solid hit by Josh Buell. Let's send it down to Craig Sager. Well, following up on what Charles was talking about, Seneca Wallace being out there, I think Dan McCartney wants to finish with Seneca Wallace. Maybe it's not just the momentum of the continuity going into next week against Colorado, but possibly working on certain plays because Chris Love, the backup quarterback, is standing on the sideline, and although he has his helmet on, he has yet to take one practice snap whatsoever. Nobody has talked to him, and he does not expect to go into this game. Huh? Yeah, I think see big Chris Love out of Round Rock, Texas, just outside of Austin. This is where I just need to exit on this, let the coaches do their job. There you, there you go. You're, you're smart. Brian Thompson, little running route, crosses the 50, gets into Kansas State territory, down to about the 47-yard line. First explosion we've seen of him. Josh Buell, the starting linebacker, still in. So Bill Snyder still has got some of his starters in. But don't forget this. The Kansas State defense takes a lot of pride in holding people down in terms of points. Mm -hmm. Kansas, last week, they had a chance to pitch a shutout. The number two defense was in the game. Kansas was driving. The number one checked themselves into the game without the coaches oh. telling them to and sent those guys out trying to preserve the shutout, and they were able to do that. Those guys don't want to come off the field either. Well, Andrew Bowman, the junior out of Milton, Massachusetts, checked in at the nose tackle spot. So they're gradually filtering some guys in. Thompson. This time back to the play over the 45-yard line, down to about the 44-yard line. Eric Everly. Senior out of Independence, Missouri, lost his lost a little gear there. What a great story that young man is. He's an art student, you know, has a tremendous talent in the art world. And his mom always said, you know, why are you doing the football? Just, just you know, do yeah. your drawing, do your paintings. Married, you know, he's a fifth-year senior. Yep. Done a great job, and uh, you know, it was great to see him out there getting a little getting a little time because he had to battle injuries and battle his way back. Oh, yeah. Just didn't want to give up football. And he's doing a great job, but boy, have you ever seen any of his artwork? It's how, fantastic. How about three art-themed degrees? And he's 6'6", 300. Yeah, that, that'll shatter, shatter a scary type, yeah. won't it? You will buy my pictures. <laughs> well, the option goes nowhere quickly. Thompson covered up by Terry Pierce, who had the penetration. You know, the, once again, the linebackers are in, and first team lines in. Watch him coming. Beautiful job by Brian Hickman, number 18, going from quarterback to pitch. Terry Pierce was the heat-seeking missile who missed going by on Brian Thompson before a great job by Brian Hickman making the first trip up before everyone else got there. Did you see that the way Hickman played the option now? Right there in the quarterback's face, stayed with him, stayed with him, forced him to pitch it, and went right from the quarterback to the pitch guy. That's excellent defense. Third down and nine for the Cyclones. Thompson. It's up over the 45 down to the 44 yard line. And you know, when Kansas State's defense was preparing for this Iowa State, Bobby Yellett, a great defensive coordinator, formerly at Iowa State for two years with Dan McCartney. I asked Bobby, who did you have a scout team? He said, we had a couple of guys, Jeff Schwinn and Maurice Mack, but you really can't simulate Seneca Wallace. I think Maurice and Jeff should get a game ball. They must have done a pretty good job. Great job. Je uh, he, uh, Schwinn was in there to throw the ball. He's a quarterback. Maurice Mack is a defensive back. I believe he was a running back in high school, and they used him to simulate the running portion of it. So they definitely have to be scout team players of the week. Blankenship's kick off the side of his foot, kicking away from Newman. Oh, come on. That'll be another hand. 
shocking. Fifth one. Now, well, we were talking to Tim Millis at halftime, the uh, head of Big 12 officials, who said, are you going to address this at the end of the season? He'd like to see more of an NFL rule instigated. Yeah, and he talked about in the NFL, you know, the numbers, you know, the big guys don't have to be on the field. You know, here in college football, you have to have five guys with numbers between 50 and 79. Bigger guys on the field going down on punt coverage. He's saying eliminate that. He's saying eliminate the halo rule mm -hmm. and go back to where you call it fair catch or not. And then you penalize them heavily if they violate with the big hit before anyone gets there. That's how you that's how you help eliminate that one. Because right now, what he thinks is a punt returner thinks he's protected by the two-yard rule. Really, he's not. You see Ellis Hops coming off the field, not happy about what happened because he said he planted yeah. and it got moved up into his space. I'm just trying to make a play, coach. Well, he, he did what he was supposed to do, but he got penalized for it. Kansas State takes over back on the ground. Mark Dunn is now in a quarterback. The 6'4 senior out of Brigham City, Utah, the 25-year-old. Went on a mission for a couple of years. Back in, started the season as the number one quarterback. And now Darren Sproles has gone over 100 yards. Again, sixth consecutive game. Side of Cyclones, say goodbye. And I think Darren Sproles will also say goodbye and come out of the game, too. They don't want to get him dinged as he goes out to a nice ovation from the crowd. That'll allow Carlos also, who just got moved over to get some running, get some carries now from defensive back. Look at that record. Isaac Jackson, 1973, yep. initially set the record of six straight 100-plus yard games. Over 1,000 yards tonight for the season, over 100 yards for the game. Carlos also the freshman out of Liberal, Kansas, the redshirt freshman. His 15th rush of the year. Well, the drama of the NBA is on TNT this Thursday. Listen up with Charles Barkley and Ernie Johnson presented by Gatorade. Starts the evening at 7 o'clock Eastern, followed by exclusive NBA coverage in Game 1. The Utah Jazz take on Michael Jordan and the Washington Wizards. And in Game 2, Orlando Magic travels to play the L.A. Clippers. And the evening wraps up, of course, with Inside the NBA presented by Hyundai. How about Tracy McGrady for the Magic? Doc Rivers has them playing so well right now. It all starts with McGrady and Grant Hill. Seems to be healthy. Ankle hold up. Huh? Holding up. He had a little scare last week. Where he had some soreness and checked out of the game. And people immediately held their breath. There have been more hints about the Grant Hill ankle on the Internet now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> more articles written about that than almost anything else in the NBA. Victor Mann with his 12th carry of the year. Big Richard, freshman out of Fort Worth, Texas. I'll tell you what. Well, Seneca, if you look at him, you can't tell. I mean, he, that's how strong of a personality this young that's man That's what he looked like to us yesterday that's prior right. to the game. He's very good at controlling his emotions. As coaches have told us before, great play, bad play. He stays on an even keel, which only benefits the ball club. Dunn hands off also has got some running room. Tips toe to down the sideline. Let's go to Ernie Johnson with an update on the game, Ernie. Yeah, Ron, last week when Georgia lost to Florida, Terrence Edwards dropped a wide-open pass as Georgia was trying to drive to the tying touchdown. Caught a lot of flack for that. Here, nursing a seven-point lead, it's Edwards on the receiving end of David Green's pass. 31-17 Georgia with 2.27 to play, leading Ole Miss. Two. All right, thanks, EJ. That's great for him because that young man did catch a lot of flack. I oh, live yeah. in Florida, so I heard a lot of that. But what a lot of people didn't realize is that his mother went to the hospital during the game. He was hospitalized. So, you know, that if, if that word got to him prior to, that's not very good for your psyche trying to play that's football. Right. And he had to worry about that after the ball game. So that's nice to see. Carlos Olson again on the carry out of liberal Kansas. Here's a young man that up until a couple of weeks ago was playing defensive back, comes in, has a couple of great carries, and Bill Snyder walks up to him and says, where have you been? Oh, that's right, you've been on defense. <laughs> so he, they said, coach, he's been playing defense. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. And they said he just plateaued on defense, wasn't really making progress, and they've had a couple of injuries. Danny Morris got hurt, so he's not going to be able to play anymore this year, and they needed another running back. Daniel Davis is kind of getting passed over. That's right. Because Carlos also has come over and getting the bulk of carries. Daniel Davis, the transfer from North Carolina, where he led them in rushing a few years ago. We saw him earlier this year against USC. Mm -hmm. You know, Carlos also hits the, hits the field first. He's only been on offense a few weeks. He did rush for over 3,000 yards in his high school career and 43 mm -hmm. touchdowns. Just a reminder, the movie ball right after our game. And <laughs> Dumb and Dumber. Look at that. Does he go to Hagueville? 
How about Varney's, downtown Manhattan? We love Varney's. Oh, I tell you what. That's very nice of Varney's. <laughs> and look at that. Dumb and Dumber is next. Dumb and, no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's supposed to be about us, right? <laughs> well, the way they've written all the promos. It, it's, 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 for, it's yeah. for Ron and Charles. <laughs> That's right. Well, Kansas State has hung 60, at least 60 points on three different opponents this year. Trying to make it four as we go inside at seven and a half to play. They're just keeping it on the ground, showing a little mercy. Also begin getting the bulk of the work, and Jermaine Billups coming up from that strong safety spot. And Kansas State will be forced to kick it away. I remember Cotton Fitzsimmons when he was coach of the Phoenix Suns, and he used to say that after you'd lose by 40 or 50, I mean, you got spanked. He used to walk in, take one of the Johns and flush it, and say, gentlemen, let's move on. Yeah, that Don't worry over. about it. You know, would not be surprised to hear next week that Iowa State didn't even bother watching this film. Yep. You know, that, that's what coaches use sometimes. Sometimes you can watch a film and use it to get better, and sometimes it's just not worth watching. Let's move on. Now we should stop the game and bronze the ball. We didn't have a halo violation. 6.51 to play. First and ten line is brought to you by Home Depot. Now Seneca Wallace is done for the evening as we have 6.51 to play. Coming in at quarterback is Chris Love, the big 6'5 sophomore out of Round Rock, Texas. They like this young man. Hand off, Thompson, straight up the middle. Marcus Patton, the backup strong safety out of St. Louis, Missouri with a stop. Here's a young man who's tall, doesn't get rattled. He's played in some games already this year, and he's already starting to gain the team's confidence, which I found pretty unusual considering he's just a sophomore. And what is it about these Texans? There you go. Round Rock, Texas. Copperus Cove, Texas. There you go. Round Rock, Texas, New home of the uh, Round Rock Express. Go Ryan's double-A baseball team. New Braunfels. We saw Cliff Kingsbury earlier. That's the right. New Braunfels unicorns were his dad's head coach. <laughs> you know, these Texas kids, they don't get phased by much. No. Come down and see a high school game down in Texas. Huh? We'll, we'll show you I, what it's like down I, there. I am dying to go see a game, a high school game in Texas. So if you're Seneca Wallace, what do you think he's thinking about right about now? Well, he's thinking about how he rallies his team. You know, he's thinking he's going to take the pressure on himself, I'm quite sure say that he played a poor game and that contributed big to what happened tonight and that he's going to go ahead and assume the mantelpiece of leaders the mantle of leadership and try and get them ready to go because they can still accomplish a lot of their goals oh yeah by going next week to colorado and beating the buffaloes and they don't think that that's impossible todd miller in motion they keep it on the ground Thompson taking a couple of big-time hits. Alex Carrier, the sophomore out of Houston, Texas, coming from that left-end spot, getting a little playing time tonight. That's his 10th tackle of the year. And if you're Kansas State, I think you're feeling pretty good about yourself because you're getting some guys some playing time right now. You still have a couple of games left, obviously. Nebraska next week right here on this field. You have to go to Columbia, Missouri, which is never an easy chore. No, that's not with Brad Smith pulling the trigger now for, for Missouri. But, you know, we've heard all the questions about Bill Snyder's team. Is this team as good as everybody thinks they are? And a lot of people here in Manhattan, quite frankly, don't think so. And, and, I tell you, their defense is one of the best in the country, period. Su surprised me a little bit to hear that because look at yeah. their losses. You know, look at who they've lost to. Colorado at Colorado by four. You know, I mean, you go to Colorado and lose to them by four. Remember, Colorado was a preseason top five team or top eight team. They lost to Texas by three at home because they couldn't kick a field goal that would have tied the ball game, remember? Mm -hmm. You know, ball gets batted down. You know, people were saying, well, Baylor's not very good and Kansas isn't very good. And I don't think anyone's going to argue with that. But Iowa State's pretty good. Yeah. And they laid it on them tonight. And they have seven points separate an undefeated season. That's right. Kansas State. They beat USC, who's a top 10 team now. And will move up. And will move up in the polls. So don't say that they're not very good. They are. <laughs> Pass is complete. Miller had some running room. Crosses the 40 up to about the 45-yard line. His second reception of his career this year. Good pass, though, by Chris Love. He's got a little zip on the ball, too. Now's the time to work on things for him. And, you know, you mentioned the team has confidence in him in case something happens to Seneca. This will be another example of why they have confidence in him if he's able to you know, get a drive and move his team downfield and have the team feel good about that just in case. But make no mistake about it. There is only one number one quarterback. That's right. It's Seneca Wallace. Picked up 16 on that tie, his season high. 
Straight ahead running. Let's go to Ernie Johnson, EJ. Yeah, Ron, I got an update on Cal and Arizona State. The Golden Bears uh, forging a three-point lead, 41-38, and then adding to it Kyle Bowler to Joe Igber. And California with still plenty of time to go in the fourth, leading by 10. Ron? <laughs> Absolutely amazing, EJ. I tell you what, Igber's a good little back. We've seen him this year, had their homecoming game against UCLA. They played extremely well. He, he's a little scat back. That he is, if you can ever figure out what number he wears. <laughs> remember, the, remember the thing that Aaron brought us, the report? Yeah. About how he changed numbers all the time, even in high school, just his own little thing. And speaking of numbers, that would have been another turnover added to the list. Jesse Tetwan, the freshman, the freshman free safety. Now let's take a look at tonight's All-State good hands play, and I've got a sneaking suspicion what it is. Option to Darren Sproles, showing the good hands, catching the ball, and then holding on to it, ball security, as he goes into the end zone. I thought it was going to be one of the interceptions by Bobby Walker. Yeah, well, you know, there were number ones, they, number of plays they could have picked from, but oh, yeah. a lot of good hands shown on the All-State good hands play. <laughs> what a great job by Darren Sproles. Catching the ball on the option. 316 to play. <laughs> Running play to no avail. And Brian Thompson again. He was tackled by number 51, Andy Clocky. This Kansas State team, you know, you always talk to Bill Snyder and all the years that we spent time with him, he's been so gracious with his time. And you say, boy, you know, you're, you're getting better. And he's always been even keel. You can never tell about, about him because he always wants he's just improvement from his team. Yeah, and you notice here, the preacher. Terry Pierce. You know what Terry Pierce's ambition is post football. He wants to attend law school. So he's getting an early start here as a barrister. <laughs> That's right. There you go. Punt is blocked. Up in the air. Inside the 30, down to the 28 yard line. Alex Carrier is the one who got the hand on it. Maurice Thurman is the one who recovered it. From Kansas State with great field position. Well, the snap was bad, and it's just not that night. Well, the snap was actually good. Just took his hands off. We'll be back. Look closely, and you can see a CEO, a senator, a teacher. With the largest leadership studies program in the Big 12, it's easy to see why Kansas State University is ranked by high school counselors as one of the top 10 undergraduate experiences in the nation. Start your future as a leader. Kansas State University. Two minutes and 31 seconds left in the ball game, and number 12, Kansas State, will at least keep this ranking as they're putting a thumping on Iowa State, 58-7. Along with Charles Davis, Aaron Andrews, Craig Sager, I'm Ron Thulin. And in case you just joined us, it was a 13-0 game. Kansas State uh, gave up seven to Iowa State. And since that point, it's been all downhill. Well, tonight's question is from Paul Hunt in Georgetown, Texas. Who's your leading Heisman candidate? Oh, man. Oh, man. Nice question, Paul. Paul. On, Thank Paul. you so much. You're Appreciate killing us. that very, very much. Um, Flip a coin, huh? I tell you what, you got a number of people. Willis McGahee. That's, that's still my, Miami. You know, I like him. I like him. A lot of people will say Ken Dorsey is the quarterback at Miami because he's now, what, 35 and 1 as a starter yep. over his career. Carson Palmer. Carson Palmer, I think, has to be involved. We'll see him next week at USC. I thought that uh, Seneca Wallace had a chance to get back in it tonight. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. But how about one for the defense? How about Terrell Suggs, the defensive end for Arizona State? 18 and a half sacks going into tonight. We'll see him next week. I'm not sure what his numbers have been. But, uh, you know, I really don't have a clear-cut Heisman. I don't either. Trophy guy. I don't I, think anybody will till the I, end of the I think that December. on our crew, Craig Sager is the guy who gets the vote. I think Craig has been. I think Craig's a voting member on that. I wonder That's what he right. thinks. He's going to vote anybody that wears a Northwestern jersey. <laughs> <laughs> About a minute and 42. Once again, next week, Arizona State, USC, seven o'clock Eastern. Two weeks from tonight, we'll have Texas Tech at Oklahoma. Dark gun at quarterback, Ayo Saba. 
Down to 15. Here's Craig Seger. Well, earlier you guys were talking about you wondering what was going through Seneca Wallace's mind. I don't know, but I do know that his teammates are trying to encourage him. Zach Butler, the captain in the center who got injured in the first half, then tried to play later, went up to him and said, listen, I'm sorry I let you down. The whole Second offensive down, line let you down. Nine, nine. Let's regroup, get ready for Colorado. They started talking about Colorado. Then several other players went up to him and said it wasn't his fault that as a team, totally, they collapsed. They're trying to keep his spirits up, already looking forward to Colorado. And as you mentioned, not looking forward to looking at the game tape which hopefully they won't have to do that's right that's right you got that right final 50 seconds nick thick and dick in the backfield that's the lineup they've used for this last drive just running the same play over and over Saba gets down to the 10 yard line maybe the last play of the game let's take a look at our tonight's regular five-star play of the game and it's the interception for the touchdown by bobby walker he had a couple of them tonight well, Bobby's a safety now, but Bobby used to be a cornerback. Helps his coverage skills. Wrangler, real comfortable jeans. Final 13 seconds. Great job by the Kansas State defense tonight. Totally dominating this game. And that's the way it's going to end up. Not a good night for Iowa State. Only 249 yards offense. Kansas State about 380 yards total offense. And Bill Snyder hands Iowa State their second Big 12 loss. Now Bobby Elliott, the defensive coordinator who's been through some tough times, was diagnosed with cancer a couple of years ago. And nobody gave him a chance to come back coaching until dan mccartney as, as bobby says pulled him off the pile of bones gave him a coaching job now he's come back to beat his former roommate and best friend his defense does a great job as they win at 58 7 bobby Elliott, one of the class guys in this business one of the great ones out there considering what he's gone through and just wanted to come here because he had the opportunity to be a coordinator again now, let's go down to Craig Sager with the man of the hour, Bobby Walker. Sags? Uh, Bobby, this defense has been so tough all year. What did you see today against Seneca Wallace? That obviously, he was frustrated. You had the two interceptions. We saw uh, he was a mobile quarterback. And he, um, he he very versatile. He can roll out the pocket he real good. He quick off his feet. And he got a great arm. So we just wanted to stay contained with him. How did it feel to go in the end zone for those two touchdowns? It felt great. You think you had the first one? Uh, I ain't gonna argue. The referees gave it to me, so I'll take it. All right, let's go back up to Ronnie Charles. How come every time Craig interviews somebody, they run away from him? <laughs> <laughs> Kansas State wins it. They were impressive on defense and impressive on offense. We'll be back to Manhattan after this. TBS Big Play Saturday brought to you by T-Mobile. With T-Mobile, you get more from life. Get more minutes, more features, more service. By Philips. Stay sharp on game day with a Philips digital widescreen projection TV. By NCAA Football 2003 from EA Sports. It's in the game. And by Gateway. A better way. And once again, the final score, 58-7. The count, Kansas State wins it. Iowa State fans are a little on the shock side. As we take a look at tonight's U.S. Army Players of the Game, powered by America Online, is voted by the fans. And Seneca Wallace still gets 76% of the votes. And L. Roberson, who played a fine football game tonight, stayed within himself, got 35%. Taco Wallace, 23 Darren Sproles got 20% of the votes. But K Kansas State... Stays one game behind Colorado because Colorado holds the tiebreaker. They need a little help right now, but I think Kansas State stood up to the challenge, proved a point tonight. They are still a great football team. They are, and I think that Bill Snyder may visit Iowa State's locker room to encourage them next week. They go to Colorado, and that gives Kansas State a chance to get back into the Big 12 North race in terms of trying to win it. But a very impressive job tonight by Kansas State in all aspects of the game. Final score again, 58-7. to seven. Big Play Saturday has been presented to you by Best Buy and T-Mobile. Once again, the final score, Kansas State, number 12 in the country, wins it 58-7 over number 21, Iowa State. For the latest scores, in-depth analysis, CNNSI.com at Sports Illustrated at CNN Speed.
And our next telecast will be next Saturday at 7 o'clock Eastern on TBS as the 25th-ranked Arizona State Sun Devils take on the 10th-ranked Trojans of USC. And Big Play Saturday continues with the Movie Bowl as Jim Carrey stars in Dumb and Dumber. For Charles Davis, Greg Sager, Aaron Andrews, and the rest of the crew, I'm Ron Thulin saying good night from Manhattan, Kansas. For the final score, Kansas State wins it 58-7. EJ will wrap things up from the big game house right after this.